Hi guys, I'm started like six minutes early, <clears throat> so I'm just going to yap a little until the correct time, if you don't mind. Uh, and then we'll get on to the subject of the uh, update for tomorrow, 10.02. Um, so yeah, what you're looking at on screen, guys, eh... So this, I, I am, this is my Rusty account, I mean, this is Shinrata Desra. I know it doesn't look recognisable as that, but it is. You know when you do a hyper jump and you press, I press X on my keyboard to, during the hyper jump, so that I can leave the room knowing the ship's going to come to an immediate stop the moment it jumps out. And that's what I did. But I've come back and I was only, I was only away for a few seconds, but the, the FSD cooldown was still going which makes me think it was a long one, which makes me think it didn't stop in time. And it actually crashed. It did an emergency stop into the sun, so something's gone wrong. And now I find that I have an orange ship staring at a, a glass full of very hot orange juice. This is a bit closer than I wanted to get. Um, and my, my heat is is managing to be okay this is really weird isn't it check this out guys hold on so yeah we started a bit early so i'm just gonna i'm just going to give it uh, about f four minutes and then we'll get into it uh where's my mouse oh it's over there there we go so i i do not want to get any close <laughs> i don't think i can i must i must have emergency braked out of this right i must have Yeah, because look at my hull. Modules? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, guys. It's stopping the engines during the sup uh, during the hyper jump didn't work. Oh, dear. However, <clears throat> as I said, my heat is holding at 51. So I'm just going to plop my way to Jameson, guys, and then we can uh, have a chit-chat. This is not going to be a seven hour stream. We've had two of those and I just want to have a little chat about tomorrow, tomorrow's update. So I don't know if I'm going to need to drop a heat sink here. I just want to make sure that that blue circle is directly in the middle of the compass because that's where the vector point's going to be to get out. Oh, well, no, actually, it isn't. It's a little bit down to the side for some reason, okay? So, yeah, welcome Andy K, Cosmic Drifter, Commander, KSY, Meta Parcel, and Loot. Hi, guys, welcome, welcome. <coughs> yes, yeah, 6 hours and 59. Oh, crazy, eh? Man. So yeah, I just got back off the treadmill. I think I did myself a bit of a mischief because I was really feeling my chest after it a little. Well, a little. I, I was not really feeling it, but I, yeah. But I, I had it on a faster speed this time, which was more in, in with my normal walking pace. And I did another 15 minutes on it, and uh, yeah. I wasn't out of breath when I got off. That was good. It was alright. But my god, my my chest seems to be quite fragile at the moment. Mr. Yamix has come online. There you go. Still doing it, still cooking it. <laughs> I haven't watched any Yamix stuff for a while now. Yes, Commander Razorlight, it is. Um, we'll go into it all in a minute. I want to go through the the, uh, the Elite Dangerous Forum. And I also want to go through people's responses. I want to have a look at those, see what people have written. And I will be commenting on people's comments, I think. Yeah, why not? Do something different. If they make a good comment, cool. We'll get on board with it. If they make a silly comment, well, we'll get a bit silly, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't know who's commented what or who said what. I've no idea. 
just so you know I haven't gone through the comments and picked anybody out or anything no 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 I haven't even looked I've basically just seen the first post from Frontier so but I know that there's three currently three pages of comments so maybe somebody's posted I don't know funny pictures and memes we'll have a look through and see what people think I'm sure it's going to be just a lot of people wanting to know what what the hell uh, Super Cruise Overcharge is uh, but anyway let's get landed first I, I'm kind of I, I, I think it's kind of cool but I also am a l little bit disappointed but maybe I shouldn't be but yeah I don't think maybe I, I don't think I, sh I should be disappointed but um, but uh, yeah I, again I'll explain all that in a little while so make you make put your kettles on and get your hot Ribena I've never had a hot Ribena anyway or have I maybe anyway doesn't matter right so yeah back at Jameson at home with all of my ships ship is on the ground the ship is on the ground Technoia continues to lose ground. All right, awesome list. So yeah, this looks very much like it looked like it was orange, didn't it, against that that sun? But as you can see, it it is not orange. Is it me or does that decal just not look like it's gelling on there very well? Right, where are we? Okay, so we are. We are past the live stream start time, so we can start talking. Kevin Wilson, hi Kevin. So yeah, Mark, hello Mark, welcome. Roger, hello Roger. Hey, nice to see all you guys here. Okay, I have my, my tea. Uh, what we can do here is we will, how can we get to a quiet place in here? Because even if you go here, do we have the audio? No. On the main menu you do though, right? But here on the pause menu there's no audio. Okay, cool. We got nice and quiet. Sky 173, hello. <sighs> Breathe. Okay, guys. Let's take a look at what is happening in the world of ED. All right. Let me have a look. So, oh, it's 18.02. Why did I put 10.02? What am I mixing that up with? 10. What just got an update to... Oh, Assetto Corsa. Eh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, Assetto Corsa. 0.10, I think, with the Nodge Lifer update. Okay, sorry. Oh, that was, yeah, mixing it up. Uh, yeah, 1802 comes tomorrow. So, maintenance begins uh, at 8 o'clock. Notifications begin two hours earlier. Just in case you're... Playing Elite Dangerous at six in the morning, right, guys? Some of you probably might be. Uh, and the server's back online four hours later, if all is well uh, with this. Please note, time is subject to change. In which case, that just means <laughs> if we're scratching our asses, you know, we it, we. <laughs> it's, they're just covering themselves, basically. Okay, update notes. Update notes, guys. We're gonna we're gonna pour through these as well, so I want to have a look through them. So, super cruise overcharge. So this is the new frameshift drive that's come from this Titan technology com drive components, right? Whatever that that was, yeah. Um, so I said earlier that I was disappointed. But I shouldn't be because it's kind of cool, this. And the reason is because I'm disappointed in that it's not an FSD that looks like it's going to be offering even further jump range. And if it did, though, that would kind of make the FSD V1 that we put on yesterday on the Python, it would kind of make that a little bit redundant already. And I'm, it, it stands to reason they do not want to, to make the pre-engineered FSD redundant in such a short time. Uh, unless, of course, you made it a, 
a, a mod that you could add on to even that and make, turn it into a V2 or something? I don't know. So what they've done is that it looks to me, educated guess, based on my current level of education, it looks to me like instead of increasing the jump range on the hyper jump, they're making super cruise even faster. Right? So if you overcharge your super cruise level it's going to make your travel to a given planet a given star or whatever faster <clears throat> this is really going to be good for exploration it's going to make things a little bit quicker to get to places how much quicker well we don't know we don't know we'll have to find out tomorrow um but i like this this is this is a good one uh, it's i didn't even think about this about super cruise didn't even because when you think of fsd you tend to just think of the of the hyper uh, the hyper jump right uh autopilot soul we already have one really well we don't have an autopilot but i don't think many people want an autopilot i i certainly don't uh, but we do have super cruise assist already and if you couple this Super Cruise Overcharge with a Super Cruise Assist as well, you've got less time to go and make your cup of tea before you get there. So that's bad. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, who just popped in? Oh, Steve Zodiac. Hi, Steve. Hi, Saul. Hi, Sindre. Yeah, so this is going to be great for any ship. Never mind exploration ships. This is going to be good for any ships, I think. Um... <laughs> What I'm interested to know is, will it be pre-engineered like the other one is, like the V1? Hmm. Or will it be a standard FSD that has Super Cruise Overcharge ability on it, and yet again you can take it to Felicity to get the Grade 5 increased FSD range and the Mass Manager? Will it be that way? Well, we don't know, they're not saying. And I and I don't mind that they're not saying they want us to find out tomorrow. Cool. Now it says here it can be found in a number of outputting services, especially in more technological advanced markets. So I'm guessing this is systems that have uh, high is it high tech um, states? Yeah, high tech states. And then we'll just go to an outfitting there. And have a look. We'll live. We'll, we'll. I'll stream it tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we'll take a look. And it will in introduce a new functionality. Uh, Super Cruise Overcharge. Wow, my chest is hurting, guys. Oh, but I think it. It's like all over. I don't think it's specifically hot. It's just exertion off the treadmill. I don't know. It's it's on and off. I've had it. I felt like this before though. But yeah. Anyway, I'll just let it go. If I suddenly go quiet, guys, then you'll know something's wrong. Uh, so, yeah, and already they know about a bug. Jesus, they can't even get the audio for all the ships. That's not good. So this tells us one thing, though. It tells us that Super Cruise Overcharge has its own audio. And it also might be something... That is not always there, but maybe you can turn it on and off. Maybe when you get to full throttle, if you hit full throttle for a second time, it'll hit overcharge. I don't know. Or maybe maybe it's it's the overcharge works like a supercharger. That it's the extra power is there the whole time, right? So let me know what you guys think, because it's not going to give any extra jump range, for sure. Um, but it's, it's going to replace your current FSD, from what I can imagine. It says, new rating C. Hmm. Rating C. So that's nothing to do with classes or grades. Doesn't say class C, doesn't say grade, nothing. It's rating I think this is going to be good, especially, I'll tell you what, guys, I just thought of something. Um, 
who's going to be the first person to see, to fit one of these and see how much faster it takes to get to Hutton Orbital. That's got to be a test that has to be done. I think I'd like to do a Hutton Orbital run from a, a, from a, a specific spaceport in Alpha Centauri. We could do it while we're chatting, actually. Take a specific ship. It has to be the same ship that we're going to take when we put the other FSD in. And compare the times it takes to get to Hutton Orbital. That would be an interesting thing. Because that, that, that's going to be a good one, surely. Someone's going to put that one to the test. But you, you need identical ships, though. So you need, you need a before and after comparison. So we could do that now. I could, I could just whiz on over to Alpha Centauri right now, and we could just take a ship that I'm going to fit this thing on. I'm going to risk taking a, a, a class a class 5, a ship with a class 5, because I think it'll come... I hope this FSD comes in all sizes, by the way, unlike the the pre-engineered one. I hope it comes in all, all shapes, all sizes, all grades, everything. Yeah. No more free anacondas. Yeah, the DFS sale has ended on that one, I'm afraid. Uh... Yes, it, yeah, not a new, well, uh, so I would say that faster supercruise is a new feature. I would class it as a quality of life feature, personally, because it's going to make travel times to anywhere faster. I just hope the, they're fitting better brakes on the ship to slow it down, because it's going to have to slow, t <laughs> it's going to have to slow down earlier if it's going to be traveling super quick. But if, you know how many times, like, we go explore, exploring and you have, oh, uh, two bios detected, stratum tectonicus on a planet that's 30,000 light or 90,000 light seconds away. Or what about yesterday, guys, on yesterday's stream, every time, well, pretty much every time, when we found a high-grade emission, there was one that was 97,000 light seconds away, and we had only 10 minutes on it. Now, with Super Cruise Overcharge, arguably, if it's what we think it is, we could get to that high grade a lot freaking faster. We'd have more time available to jump in and out. There's no downside to this, up to this thing. It's, it's going to have advantages all over the place. Oh, baby. All right. <laughs> yeah. The more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm liking it, guys. I have to say. Uh, an experimental effect. No, uh, no, it's not. It's, it's an actual... Uh, it's a Rating C frameshift drive module. So it will replace your current module. The way they've written it here, this is the way I understand it. it, it is, so you will be taking out your current F engineered FSD and you'll be putting it on this. Does every ship need Super Cruise Overcharge? Probably not. No, the ones that stay in the bubble and just go for a few jumps to do combat here and there or whatever probably not but will every ship benefit from it yeah maybe it seems to, maybe if if this module can do everything that the other one can then yeah cool I, I, when i mean what the other one can i mean in terms of being expanded with its fsd range at felicity farsi or whatever However, guys, this is one thing that I'm thinking of, and I really hope Frontier don't do this, because if they do, then they've screwed the pooch. They've screwed the pooch on it. If they make this module either or, they've messed it up. By that, I mean... If you can fit a frameshift drive module, rating C, 
with super cruise overcharge but that module does not have the capacity to have its jump range expanded at an engineer I think they've missed the boat by making you choose well do you want a big hyper jump range or do you want fast super cruise if you can't have both I think they messed it up I, I, I wouldn't like that is that something Frontier would do definitely they would do that hello sir n68 think of that though guys it could happen it might have super cruise overcharge but you might be able to go then to Felicity and it will say cannot engineer this module oh dear well it's grade C though Syndra it's not they've front you have to be very careful with their wording here this is not grade C like if you buy an FSD module there is A, B, C, D, E, right? But they are they are called classes. That's class class A, class B. It's not rating. This is rated. It's a whole different word, whole different thing. And if it means class, they should have said it. But if we can get a frame shift drive that we can engineer, one of these things, that we can engineer up to the, what we do, 70 light years, whatever it might be, plus have the plus have the the super cruise overcharge. Boom. Yeah, okay, cosmic. Nitpicking, but yeah. Okay, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Neither of those words you've got you've got class and you've got grade rating isn't the letter grade is the letter it's grade right grade a grade they're grades right they're not it's not rating oh i don't know oh, am, am i thinking of engineering grade five supercharge but look at biweave shields they are c only With Frontier, you and Elite Dangerous, there is always, always, always a trade-off. They never, they never give. They will always give with one and take with another. Always. Every time. There has got to be a compromise on this thing. You can have Super Cruise Overcharge, but you're going to lose somewhere else. Let me just take a look at something here, guys. I just want to have a look, just to I'm sure, because you might be right, Cosmic. I just want to have a look. I don't even know if it actually specifies, but we'll jump in here. I've got a feeling, oh, you know, if, if they do make it so that you've got your long jump range and your overcharge, awesome. That would be brilliant. But as the more I think about it now, well, well, no, it wouldn't be good for wake scanning, would it? Because don't you do your wake scanning in normal space? All right, so class three, and then we have, uh, let's go here. So, Oh, it is. Okay, rates. Okay. So it's going to be, they're all going to be C's. So we're going to have a, a 5C, maybe a 4C, maybe a 3C. That's fine. It's going to weigh the same as the A. Uh, but that means, maybe then that means, okay, you, you can up engineer it. I'm just speculating. You can engineer it as normal. But it will not have the ultimate jump range of an A rated one.
Now, I, we know Frontier give with one, take with the other. We know that, right? They just do. I'm not a particular fan of that method. I don't think it's... In some cases, it does work. You know, that you... you but why does it always have to be that way? Why do we always have to gain something and then lose with something else? Oh, I've just seen something else, guys. How many of you were on my stream yesterday uh, when I when I bought the pre-engineered FSD? You guys remember what happened? Remember that? Look at this. It was a bug. We talked about this just yesterday. I went to Felicity with the pre-engineered FSD. I could not put the experimental on. Boom. There it is. Straight away. So, okay, that sorted that. So, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Will it kill our jump range? Do we Will we be able to choose? Because from an exploration point of view, Super Cruise Overcharge is going to be really good. A really, really nice thing to have. As we're going from planet to planet to get bio scans or whatever right for for exploration a super cruise overcharge function would be really cool really good really helpful but if it doesn't come with jump range as well oh dear then it's no good in an exploration ship is it i mean you could if Frontier provide the ability to upgrade, to engineer this with an increased FSD and add the mass manager, which they probably will if they've just fixed this other one down here. But then you're only going to get the jump range of a C-rated one. So you're, you're paying in jump range. So instead of having 70 light year jump, you may have 55, but you'll have the super cruise overcharge. There's always a concession. So, guys, ask. I, I'm going to ask you a question. As, as an explorer, if you're exploring, what do you choose? Do you choose the 70 light year jump range with no super cruise overcharge? Or would you settle for 55? I'm just picking numbers here. Would you settle for a 55 jump range with Super Cruise Overcharge on it? Assuming you can even engineer these things, which is not known yet. Hmm. What do you sell for? I think... For me, I think it depends. If I'm going... A little ways out, maybe to the bubble nebula, 8,000 light years away. I can handle the lower jump range and take the overcharge. If I'm going to Beagle Point, I want that freaking jump range. I want that 70 light years, guys. I want that. Do you know? <laughs> I'm not going sick. I'm not going all the way to Beagle Point with 15 light year less jump range. Uh -uh. No, thank you. For short trips, sure. Yeah. But the longer ones? Colonia? Who knows? Colonia? Yeah, Colonia, I'm, I'm going to say jump range. Why? Because normally when we go to Colonia, we, we're just... It's just to get there, isn't it? It's like going to visit family for the fifth time. It's just to get there. It's not to stop and see the sights. You go to Colonia just to get there, don't you? <laughs> Especially if you've been there a couple of times before. Um, 
Bubble Hopper Overcharge. Yeah. Yes, yes, Star Warrior. Yes, yes. In, in the bubble, definitely the Overcharge. Hey, Malcolm. Hi, Digital. Mark Thomas. Hey, Mark. Sir N68, Star Warrior, Grimulus. Nice to see all you guys here. Thank you for coming. It should have been an experimental effect, not a module. Um, yeah, but I, agree, I, I would agree that would be ideal and in an ideal world. But then there would be no compromise. And in Frontier ED world, there's always compromise, isn't there? All freaking ways. The only time you could say that that wasn't the case is with the pre-engineered FSD. That it, it was better than the Felicity Grade 5. And again, tomorrow they're going to fix it. So you can also add the math, the math manager on there. So on that one, yes, they did give without taking. Although, you, although <laughs> I say that, but it's not 100% true, is it? They didn't just give without taking. It wasn't strictly true because if I wanted a 5A FSD, i just go to outfitting and buy one. Where if you want a pre-engineered one, you have to grind for the materials to get it. That's the trade-off. And we know that part of those materials... <laughs> oh boy, which one was it? Was it the pharmaceuticals we had to get for that? Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Not something for nothing. In some cases it works. The trade-off. You know? It's the same with weapons and... Or hard points and um, no weapons. Yeah, it's the same with weapons and engineering. Engineering is a classic, classic example of that. You gain one area, you lose another, right? You like it. It you have it takes less power, but it but it uses but you lose integrity, for example, or you gain integrity, but it consumes more distributor. There's always a yin and a yang. Yin, Jesus, it's it's yin, isn't it? Yin and yang, yes. There's always a yin, a yin and a yang, always. <laughs> we won't find out till tomorrow. So, what they've said here, guys, from where I can nitpick with this, rating C sounds to be, they have not specified the class. So that this tells me that you will be able to get this C rated FSD in any in any class. Whether it's a five, a, a four, a three, whatever, a six, which is good, so it'll go on any ship. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess that it's a C-rated module that will be engineerable and will have the Super Cruise Overcharge, but it will still be engineerable. But when you engineer it fully to the brim at Felicity, you will not get the jump range that you would, would had it have been an A-rated FSD. Are Frontier planning on bringing other ratings of this later on? When the when the scientists get more familiar with the tech? Who knows? <laughs> oh boy guys, so many questions. We'll have to wait till tomorrow. Right, so let's go through some of these things. Um, if you guys have got any more thoughts on the Super Cruise Overcharge, let me know. Obviously, we're going to get faster Super Cruise travel. That seems to be obvious, kind of, really, isn't it? What else is it going to be? How is it going to work? I'm 
I'm, I was about to say, I'm expecting the audio to be really cool because Frontier always do cool audio, always. But then we have this. <laughs> we, we don't know which ships. Come on, Frontier, fix it for tomorrow. Anyway, fixed being unable to add. So this was a bug. Awesome. Fixed mission icon not displaying on commodity markets. Okay, added support for hardware with up to 128 buttons. Who's got hardware with 128 buttons on it? Jeez. Fixed reboot restore mission sending players to an already... <clears throat> wow, he's still doing this? We are aware of issues with the Revenant variant of this mission spawning and are currently investigating. Oh, so what are they saying? Revenants are not supposed to spawn here? On these missions? This has been an ongoing thing for a while, hasn't it? Restore power missions and you go there and it's on already? Anyway, okay, hopefully that's the end of that one. Titan stuff, I'll let you guys read that. I'm not particular into it, but... Man, look how nuanced some of these things are. Fixed acoustic sync launcher hood indicator not filling up when viewed in gunner roll whilst in multi-crew. That is a very, very specific thing, isn't it? It's good they pick up on this stuff, though. Mm. Performance improvements. Fixed FSD failure. Drop imminent being spammed for multi-crew passengers. Fixed back face culling on target schematics. Okay. Fixed instances of abrupt lighting change on the Titan core. Okay, Thargoid ships vehicles, fixed instances of Thargoid scout behavior, fixed target UI flickering. I'm getting quite a lot of flickering actually, but I don't think it's Elite Dangerous's fault. I don't think it's the game's fault guys, I think it's somewhat on my end. Uh, fixed, okay, so they've got the new Titan decals backwards. Nice one. <clears throat> so yeah. <laughs> Servers back online at midday. So, are you guys going to be around? Because I might just stream it and then we'll take a look. It was only 32. Uh, X keys, X K E, 128 key programmable keyboard. Jesus. So, every key is programmable on it? Holy crap. It puts you into orbit. Oh, I don't know. Hey, what about when you take off from a planet's surface, right? <clears throat> you boost a couple of times to come out of mass lock. You hit super cruise and then you have to wait while you come out of the, uh, the drop zone and the orbit cruise line and all, all that until you get right up. That's going to be quicker too, surely. So we can get away from the planet. You know, like, you know when you, you, your next jump is um, cannot jump because the planet is obscured? That might be... That might take less time as well. I think for in and around the bubble, the super cruise thing will be fantastic. And I think on some exploration ships as well, but not necessarily all. It depends, though, because if you have a ship that can already do 76 light years, like my Anaconda, and I bring it down to a rating C, what's my jump range going to be? Is it going to be like 60 or 62 or something? And then can I put up with that? 62 is tolerable. You'll just end up making an extra couple of jumps, maybe extra one, two jumps, right, every so many... 100 light years or something. 1,000 light years, maybe. Like, over a span of a 1,000 light years, what do you... You'd be making an extra... An extra jump or two? There's going to be compromise on this, guys, I'm sure. Right, let's have a run-through. So... 
I think you forgot to include the section that explains what Super Cruise Overcharge does, or am I just going blind? Well, you're not going blind, or even despite your avatar, but I think they haven't forgotten. I think the idea is that we find out for ourselves. Frontier do that often, so I'm not sure why he... Maybe he's new, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think the idea is for us to find out. Oh, the jump gets more jagged. Yeah, there's that too as well. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Philip. Yeah. <laughs> right, Osric. Uh, amazed about the 32 plus button controllers being sorted. So, how many of you guys is this is going is this going to benefit? Have you guys got 32 plus plus buttons? It's good because there's a lot of bindings in front here, right? Ah, look here. There are some things we want you to experience for yourself. There you go. Just what I said. It's, it's obvious. Frontier do this all the time. They don't tell you things because we want to find out. But there's going to be compromise, man. I just know it. There has to be. If there isn't, how are they going to get around it? The compromise already is, is right there in the text. Rating C. That's a compromise straight away, because if you've got exploration ship, we all fit A-rated FSDs on, don't we? And the reason they've gone with rating C is because if we switch from an A to a C, we're not going to gain or lose weight on the ship, because it's exactly the same, but we will lose what they want us to lose, which is jump range. Yeah? Or no? Uh... No, mother fig, it's not D for exploration, not with a frameshift drive. No, the frameshift drive is A-rated on an exploration ship, always. No, San Mondo, B is the heaviest. A and C are the same, B is the heaviest, D is the lightest, and E is crap. <laughs> yeah, that's how I think of it. No, a, uh, yeah, B, B is the heaviest one you can get. But... Um, Whenever you do an exploration ship, <clears throat> it's it's A-rated. Look, 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 look. I am currently in my Diamondback. This is not a big one, but it is it is built for exploration um, and jump range. But if you look at my core internals, my life's my frame shift drive is pre-engineered, five A. And if you look at, boom, 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 what can we look at? Power plant, okay. We go to replace. You'll see here that the A, ooh, don't you dare. The A is five tons. The C is five tons. The B is the heaviest at eight tons. The D is the lightest at four tons. And the E, well, is the heaviest of all. And it's also crap. Yeah. So, where's my Firefox? Oh, you didn't close the window. No, I didn't. There it is. No, Mother Fig, it's not true. D is lighter, but the trade off is that when you engineer it, you don't get as much jump range out of it. So even though the A-rated one is heavier, you can engineer it to be even more powerful and give you even more of a jump range. Try it. Fully engineer a D-rated and fully engineer an A-rated. And you'll see the A-rated gets you even further. Um, hold on. No, oh, let's go back here. Uh, if we go to outfitting here again, got to be careful here that I don't do the, the wrong thing. So if we're going to choose uh, a, a standard 5A, okay, my jump range at the bottom is, you take note of the middle number, okay, so 48.43. With a D rated, it's 31. Even though it is lighter, this is 8 tons, 
This is 20 tons, the A-rated one. So yes, the, the D is considerably lighter, but it, it cannot, it hasn't got the optimized mass, right? Or, or what, is it, what do they call it? The, the multiplier thing. Yeah, it doesn't have it. So it's not, it's not capable. The A-rated one is where you need to be. Question is though, what's the difference between the A and the C? Because then we'll know what to expect. So if, if I'm looking at 48.4 with an A and we get a, a 5C with overcharge, what are we looking at? 35. What, what percentage is that? You can engineer the D, that is true, but you can engineer the A as well. Well, let's put it this way. An engineered D will probably be better than a standard A without engineering. But you can engineer the A. And you can also get, if you have a class 5, you can get a pre-engineered. No, there's no comparison. This is a standard 5A putting out 48.4. This is a pre-engineered putting out 68.8. Now compare that with the C. If you can't engineer it, if you can't engineer the 5C the, the, with the super cruise overcharge, dude, that's bad. They, they have to at least allow us to engineer it. It's bad enough that we're taking a drop from A, from a to C. What about 4A? 28 down to 21. It's not a bigger jump there, you see. But the higher you go... So if we get into the range... I can't do 6 here because I don't have anaconda or cut or anything but if you if you if you have a, a class six class seven i think the gap between a and c in terms of the jump range is going to be a lot different the other thing is how much power output is this thing going to put out as well does it will this super cruise overcharge mean it's it's just gonna will it consume a lot of power will it take us because some of these exploration ships that we have we run pretty much on the limit of power, if not over it, and have to do power management, right? Look at my power usage on this thing. It's 99. So if we switch over to my Exploration Conda, the big, the big one, the big baby, where are you? Do do good reason, I, uh, good thing I came here actually. So where's Annie? Right, this, I've got two Annies. I've got to make sure I get the one that's here. Unless they've moved my other one. Is my other one still there? I, I have a clone of Annie. She's literally cloned. Oh, uh, yeah, it's still up there. <laughs> oh, I wonder what I'm going to do with that. Right, let's take a look on this, guys, and maybe we can get some kind of idea. If I fitted a 5C with overcharge... Super Cruise Overcharge, what I'm kind of looking at in terms of... Because I've never taken a, a, a 5C. Oh, wait a minute, though. Guys, we can find out. We can find out. All right, let me just, let me just do something. I think we can get some idea of close figures. Assuming, whoops, assuming that what we're saying is kind of right. I think we can get some close figures here. Hold on. Right, so my FSD here is a 6, right? It's not It's not the pre-engineered one because they only come in class 5s, so it's, uh, there's no point putting one on this. This one is maxed out. To the, yeah, it's absolutely maxed out. So it's got a 77.5 jump range. What? It doesn't have. Ah, okay. We need to fuel there we go now we get accurate numbers okay jesus i know it does uh, it's 76 there you go so 76.23 is what i have on this ship and if we go here and go to replace please god don't do it so there's your standard 6a forget the engineering for now there's your standard 6a on this giving me 52.21 how much do i lose by downgrading to a C. Oh, it's it's enough, isn't it, guys? 
Now, obviously, if we can engineer this back up, we'll might, we might get it back to A. But where will we get it to if we engineered it? Well, let's find out. Uh, so, if I bring up ED Market Connector, I'm going to do the, the science, guys, <laughs> so you don't have to. The C might have another meaning. It might, but yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's just going to be... You know, like the biweave shields, what I was saying before? Biweaves are only available in class C or rating Cs. They're only available in C. You cannot get a 6A biweave. You cannot get a 6B or 6D or a 6E. doesn't exist. It's just C. So you can have a 5C, a 4C. That's it. But, having said that, right, the bi-weaves have proven, in some ways, to be better than standard shields in other areas, because they, they regen faster. I don't know what redeeming features an FSD is going to have, that it's C-rated. What do Frontier have up their sleeve, guys? I... I have no clue. Anyway, so I'm just going to put my ship on the screen here. So hold on. All right. So this is my current Anaconda, the one that you've just been looking at. And as you can see, the jump range is accurate, 76.23. And that is with a 6A frameshift drive that contains increased grade 5 with mass manager. I'm going to swap this out for an engineered 6C and then we'll get an accurate number difference on how much we're going to lose. 76.23, right? So that's what we have. I'm going to put that up there. All right. Let's change this out to a 6C and we're going to add increased mass manager. Fifty four point two. Could I deal with that on this ship? Probably not. No. I like my seventy six. That's it. So are we look is this what we're looking at? Is this what we're gonna get tomorrow? A class C FSD that drops that much. It won't drop that much on a class five or a class four or a class 3, the, the gap is going to be ever decreasing, right? But, for people in exploration condors, you're going to get something like this. So, you've got plus SCO. So, you've got, you can choose this with an A-rated A rated one, or you have a C-rated one at 54 plus Super Cruise Overcharge. Hmm. Now I have another question, guys. If I have a ship that, and I have the question because Star Warrior just brought this up, <coughs> meant for haulage. Think of this. If I have a trader ship and I'm doing trade missions, I'm a target. I'm a target for pirates who want some of my booty, okay? Let's say I fit that ship with Super Cruise Overcharge. I might, do the AI have, have this as well? Do the NPCs have Super Cruise Overcharge on their ships? Will the pirates have it? I only ask because I think if I have a, a T7 or a T9 or whatever ship I'm in to do my trading, and I have Super Cruise Overcharge, I don't think anyone's going to be interdicting me. They won't be able to catch up. And by the time I get to the place where I'm going to, and the ship starts to slow down, because we got away from them so much on the Super Cruise trip before the brakes started coming on, are they too far away to catch up now? So, 
there's that. Are you less vulnerable to interdiction? Oh boy, guys. I mean, I don't know. There's so many questions. So many. We're going to have to test all this stuff out, guys. Fit, fit them on your trading ships. Wow. And if it does, if it does circumvent you getting interdicted because no, no NPC ship can catch you because your super cruise is so freaking quick that they've got no chance of getting you, is that a good thing or a bad thing for the, from the game point of view? Because if, if it is the case that Super Cruise Overcharge allows you to avoid interdiction, maybe not makes you completely invulnerable because it could well be that as you're slowing down to get to the port that another ship is there in your range already and, and can interdict you. But it's certainly going to it's certainly going to keep you safer. <clears throat> so, this is my question. Will pirate ships have it? I don't think so, right? I don't know. Will they fudge it in some way? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, if, if if you are fitting, if you are fitting um, an FSD, I'm going to use initials all over the place here, guys. If you're fitting an FSD with an SCO on it, and on a trading ship, you're going to be worrying a lot less about being interdicted. So every time you see a message that says, oh, there's the hall I'm looking for, I don't know whether that, <clears throat> I don't know whether the overcharge is always on or whether it's something you can toggle on and off. Like boost, you know, when you're at full full throttle and you, you, you can toggle boost, boom, and it's on and you get a boost. What if it's like that? What if it's like the boost, but in Super Cruise? And what if, here's another thing, what if it is toggleable, right? If it's always on the whole journey for, say, let's say I'm heading towards a high grade emissions that's 97,000 light seconds away, as I was the other day. If it's on the whole time, that's, that's one thing. But what if it comes on like thruster boosting? What if it works that way? So you only get a burst of it. Then what? What if it only comes in bursts? Like you press the button, you've got super cr cruise overcharge on, but there's a little progress bar going down and down and down until it runs out of energy. And then you have to wait for it to recharge up again. Yeah, if an NPC has one and you don't, yeah. Yeah, you've got no chance. You will be interdicted. And and how controllable is the speed? Oh man. So many freaking questions. But I like it. I like that, you know, that we can we can find this out and and tomorrow and then just discuss it all and mm. <clears throat> battling a bit of a chest pain here guys I'm just hoping like I think if I hadn't gone on the treadmill today I wouldn't have this so I think it's because of that feels like indigestion more than anything um, yeah so anyway I think that's what we're looking at oh shall we go through the, the posts I like to read what people have written 
get quantum physics. Mm. Oh, look. <laughs> I wasn't the only one to think about that. And we're going to have to test this, guys. I swear to you, I have not read these comments already. I, I, I promise you I have not. This is obvious, though, that people are going to ask this, right? We've got to test this. In fact, why don't we, while we're running through the forum here, why don't we just do that test right now? So I'm going to take my diamond back because it's light, it's small, and it has a class 5 slot which is going to get an SCO on it tomorrow. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let's get the diamond back on it. Oh, wrong one. <sighs> Shipyard. Nope. Not Black Ice, the other one. Magellan. Okay, so this is an exploration ship. My, my, my little budget one. I will be putting one of, one of those things on here. But hey, how do we get one? Is it just going to be available in outfitting? Just, oh, here it is. Or are we going to have to grind for the frickin' thing? It did say outfitting, right? Uh, let me just d double, triple check here. Yeah, they can be found at a number of outfitting services, especially in more technologically advanced markets. So obviously, as I said before, that's going, I would imagine that's going to be systems uh, here, which are in high tech. So whatever those are, I guess. Uh, so probably here, LFT 926, maybe bookmark that as a place to go. Um, it's fairly high population. It's going to have a starport there. In fact, I'm pretty sure it does. Meredith City. So I'm imagining Meredith City is going to have one. Um, interesting, eh, guys? Interesting times. It's, it's for sure an interesting update this SCO. It, it is. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. No, not Tech Broker. It, they, they specifically said outfitting. Who do we call when you pass out in the stream? Oh, if, if that happens, dude, it's too late already. Just make sure they, they bury me under a tree in a, in a, in a, in a sheet. So I can be nutrients for the tree. Right, let's whiz over here. So yeah, it will be available in outfitting. We think it's going to be high-tech systems. <coughs> <coughs> Rating C. So it will not be an A-rated module, nor will there be a B-rated, or a D-rated, or an E-rated module. How much petrol with the new... Yeah, that's a thing. Will it consume more fuel? I would, I would say so. How much I don't know, but I I would say it would it would consume more fuel. Yeah, I I think. <clears throat> Again, if it works like a car's a car's supercharger, then yeah, for sure, it will consume more fuel. Talking of which, let's just go to our nearest port here, which is Alden Prospect. So we're going to land here, and from Alden Prospect, we're going to go here. <laughs> we're doing it, guys. It's like flying the Boeing or the Airbus. It's the same. Once we get to cruising altitude, we put it on autopilot. Actually, we put it on there beforehand, but you know what I mean. Just every now and again, periodically check that the reticle is pointing directly at. Otherwise, we're going to be flying for longer. So, yeah, let's make this journey. We will time the journey and then... 
We'll see. <clears throat> oh, can you imagine getting interdicted, though? That would be a spoiler, wouldn't it? You do, like, 40 minutes to get there, and then suddenly, as you're slowing down, somebody interdicts you. So, will it be will it be permanently on? Will it be a burst? Will it be... Will it really knock the jump range down that much? Oh, guys. Oh. Yeah. You might have a burst of overcharge, like nitrous. So is it going to be like a supercharger where it's always on? Or is it going to be like nitrous where you get a burst of it in case you need to get away or whatever? But that seems largely pointless. I would rather have it always on. Super cruise overcharge. Always on. So that you are over... Yeah, but it's going to cost you fuel as you travel. Maybe quite a bit. Maybe you'll see the fuel meter going down. It's going to cost you fuel as you as you travel, and it's going to cost you jump ultimate jump range, basically. So, how useful they are on an exploration ship is largely down to whether you personally can tolerate having a, a shorter jump range by quite a percentage as well from what I can see on my anaconda you know I mean on on the conda we jumped down from 76.2 to 54.2 so hold on So what are we losing? I think 29%, nearly 30% jump range. Because 54.22 is 71% of 76. So we're losing 29, nearly 30% jump range on a six, on a, on a class six. Those, those percentages will drop. Maybe it's only 25, 20% 20 on a class, or 25% on a class five. You lose 20% on a class four. There's a lot of class fives out there though, because a lot of ships have got them. The Asp Explorer, the Python, the, the Diamondback, they've all got class fives. Yeah. It, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And how much percentage is the increase in Super Cruise? So we don't need to dock, but just for the sake of consistency, we will. And obviously to come back to here, we will be uh, hyper jumping out and back in again. Because I'll be damned if I'm coming on the return, return trip. But a 30% drop on an anaconda, that's a, that's a chunk. You know, that's another thing they should do, right? An Imperial Cutter? Yeah, you're going to have even more, aren't you? The percentage will be a little bit higher, uh, Roger. But I think... I think what they should do is... You know when you're flying through neutron stars and you lose a bit of FSD every time you do I think you lose like one percent FSD every time you go through more or less and one percent FSD every time you you go through a, a a supercharged FSD hyper jump right that's supercharged as well frame shift drive supercharged um, so yeah, when you go through that, you lose 1%. I think every time you lose a percent, you should lose a percentage jump range. Because imagine, imagine how you would change your mind about going through a neutron highway, knowing that every time you did a neutron jump, 
your jump range would start to decrease just your ultimate jump range would just come down a little ways every time because the integrity of your FSD is not 100% but if you but don't worry because if you want to get your ultimate jump range back you just use the AFMU to repair your FSD every now and again anyway I'm just riffing guys what do I know okay so maximum fuel <coughs> Aldin prospect here and uh, let me get my stopwatch on the go so I'll go into clock ah <sighs> stopwatch okay so from when do we time this because if I hit launch Well, what it's going to be out by a few seconds, but not, not by much. Let's target it first in the wrong map. Yep, good one. Hopefully I'll be okay by tomorrow, or for, okay for tomorrow, so we can test this. So this is the only station that exists that is a distance away from us in light years, as opposed to light seconds. <laughs> Uh, in fact, in case you guys want to know, let me just find out. Okay, so it's 6.26 million light seconds away. According to Alex. Alex with the A on the end. Uh, 6.26 million. So it's a bit further away than that high grade yesterday of 97,000 light seconds. 6.2 million light seconds. All right, so we've got it plugged in. It's behind us. So I'm going to hit launch and start my stopwatch at the same time. Go. And this is how we do it. I just hope I can remember to do my stopwatch. I'll stop the stopwatch when we land. Or should I? What if we get access denied? Oh, I, I tell you what I'll do, just to be fair. I'll stop the stopwatch the moment we come out of Super Cruise into normal space. Okay, so we just leave now the speed to build up. <clears throat> I'll monitor that on my screen. I hate the fact that my uh, stopwatch is ticking. There we go. All right, so that's going. We've got this, we have to line this up like really pinpoint here. Because over time, if, if we've got a little way out over, over this distance, it's gonna drift quite a bit. Trolling the players. I'm not going to troll the players. No, I'm just going to comment on their comments in the same way as I would do if I was going to make a comment on their forum. Let's have a look. Is this what you mean here? <coughs> Less than an hour. My Cobra did it in 45 minutes. I'm not sure patch notes are the best place to have secrets. It sort of defeats the purpose. In a way, but we mm, depends because we know something's coming. We just don't know the details of it. Hiding a new game functionality seems silly to me. Um, no, I'm I'm quite happy with having to find out for myself, because if they told us everything on the patch notes. It's going to do this, it's going to mean that, you can't do this, you can do that to it. If they told us everything, then there'd be no conversation. We wouldn't have this live stream. We wouldn't be able to sit here and and discuss it and wonder and talk and like, does it affect, does it affect interdictions? Like, will it make you safer? And we wouldn't be able to sit and chat about that. And I love this. I love that we can now speculate until tomorrow. It's cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, 
Overcharged with excitement. Good one, good one. <laughs> it's a class C. Ah, oh, here we go. Sacrificing jump range for higher acceleration out of a gravity well. Is that the way you see it, though? Higher acceleration out of a gravity well? For sure it'll help with that as well. You can whiz past the planets and stars and gravity wells faster, yeah. But yeah, we are sacrificing jump range. I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be, guys. It has to be. There's no way a Class C is going to out outperform a Class A. Nope. So anyway. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of people happy with this, guys. Mm. <laughs> Love the journey, not the destination. Yeah, loop of shame. I mean, imagine, right? If you think about it, if the overcharge is on the whole time, okay, the ship is going to have to begin its deceleration a lot sooner, right? So from a further distance out, it's going to have to start decelerating. It's like anything. If you drive at 50, you can brake later to stop at a particular point. If you drive at 70, you have to brake sooner to stop at that same point. It's going to be the same thing with the overcharge. The fact that you're going that much quicker means you're going to have to slow down that much sooner. And if you don't have it in the blue zone, then your loop of shames are going to come up faster. <laughs> Right. What's this? Yes, I remember this bit. <clears throat> yeah, this is part of all the narrative. I mean, we knew all about this, didn't we? We knew that they were gathering materials from the Titan wreckage to complete research or to try and do research on a prototype frame shift drive. And it's kind of weird that from the Titan, all they've got is a faster super cruise. It's a weird thing, but anyway. And somebody asked earlier, will, that, will there be new bugs in the... F <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I, I can definitely see new bugs coming up. Based better narrative. Patch notes would be a terrible place to play out a narrative. True. Uh, I assume you're implying that a new feature won't be a new feature, but a plot point in narrative and intended consequences. I hope that's what you mean, but then the discussion proves a point well. Okay, everyone's concerned about having their point proven. But there you go. Uh, C rated is interesting. Lower overall jump range in exchange for better super cruise capabilities. Definitely something I can see fitting to one of my mission runners. Yeah, true. Ships that are within the bubble and staying in the bubble for doing whatever they do. Yeah, it's a good thing. But then those ships also spend less time in super cruise than exploration ships do. So they're not giving the exploration ships the outright benefit of something like that, are they? Unless you're prepared to sacrifice the ultimate jump range. Why can't we have... This is a really dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I can. Why can't we have two FSDs? One that we use for ultimate hyper-jumping range, and then we switch over to the other one for FSDs... <laughs> For super cruise overcharge, why? Give us, give us the, give us two FSD slots. No, anyway. <laughs> Glad to see Hutton Orbital has been upgraded with a dedicated Anaconda cell shipyard. The FDEF does it all the time, in an attempt to build hype. But I imagine there must be better ways to do that other than patch notes. Yeah, they, it is going to build hype, people are going to get hyped, and then those that don't realise that there will be a compromise might have a whinge afterwards, we'll see. There's always going to be compromise though, I just I just cannot see. There is, it's going to be compromised. 
I can't I can't see this new C rated one unless guys there is an unless to this what if the S S Super Cruise Overcharge FSD that comes in C rated can already from stock jump further than a standard C rated one what if we have that so let's say a 5C jumps you 38 light years but a, a 5C with Super Cruise Overcharge instead of jumping you 35 can jump you 39 or 40 what if it can already built in jump a little bit further and then when you engineer it you're not losing ground as much what if it does that? We don't know. Will it? Will will the S SCO jump drive offer the same base jump range as the stock 5C? There's nothing to say it will. Hey, gain damage! I call it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Am I opening too many cans of worms at once here, guys? I don't know. Forget the Galner article explaining what the drives do. Forget it. Buy one, fit it, have fun, find out for yourself. That's what I would say. I'm not going to look at Galnet. I'm just going to go and buy one, and I want to try it for myself. Will there be a new keybind for it, for overdrive function? Will it need one? Will it function with the current bindings? Or will it be always on? Yeah, look, piracy. See, now this is the thing. It changes the other way around. Remember what we were talking about? Like, if you have an FSD with overcharge that the pirates can't catch you, but what if you're the pirate and you want to catch up to their ship? and interdict him. Now the tables are turned. Now you're going to catch him and you can interdict your prey at will because you've got this mega super cruise ship. For piracy, that FSD is your golden ticket, man. You just do a, a, a scan on them and, well, you can't manifest scan them in super cruise, right? But yeah. But you, you can see what a ship has in Super Cruise, right? If you're in Super Cruise and you target a ship, can't you see what he has on board? I can't remember. Anyway, so yeah, it's been a while since I've done it. But yeah, if you're the pirate... <laughs> yeah, and in PvP, man. PvP piracy. Oh, buddy, that's going to change the dynamic. Hmm. Will it be using pips, fuel scoop mechanics? What? Oh, fuel scoop mechanics. Okay, so like, you can, yeah, so to, to put fuel in to recharge it. I think it's just going to use normal fuel. Will it be f v available via synthesis? Nope. I don't think so. I think the whole point is that the module has that functionality. And it does not need to be synthesized. Unless it has a, its own fuel tank, so to speak, and when that runs out, you have to synthesize more fuel to make it do it. But that would be that would be a downer. That would be pretty that would be pretty shitty if they did it that way, I think. Yeah, again, this is what I said, look. Super cruise boost might be as simple as the current normal space boost. So many questions, guys. So many questions. C rated is a bad one in the module grade scale. Offers the same weight of A rated, but approximately 20% integrity and 30% jump range. Oh, there you go. It's what, it's what Alexa calculated. 29 point something. Tw yeah. Yeah, you're losing 30% jump range on a class 6, but... 30 if you're losing 30% on the class 5 that number is going to be less right because the numbers are smaller to begin with yes mm. 
Yeah, we've done our calculations on this. C rated FSD plus increased range G5 plus management makes almost exactly a vanilla A rated FSD with minus 53 integrity. It depends though. We don't know what the starting integrity on on the C rated boosted one's going to be, do we? But if it's exactly the same as the standard 5C, then yes, then this would be accurate. If he's done his sums right. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a case that you can engineer the C rated up to be almost as fast as a standard A rate. Is that going to be enough, guys? Well, if it malfunctions, then you've always got reboot repair, right? You won't be stranded. Oh, this Hutton thing's going to take a while, but we are still accelerating, guys. Just to let you know, we're at 1,203C, and the clock says 1 hour and 21 minutes, but that clock is going to come down, I think, as we accelerate a little further. Um, that would be, yeah, it, it does have multiple uses, certainly. For, for piracy, brilliant. As a trader for getting away from pirates, brilliant. Providing it's always on. Or in case, if it's a burst, maybe you can deploy it. If you've got somebody on your tail that's about to interdict you, but then it kind of doesn't really have any benefit other than that, does it? So I, I don't think they're doing that. Possibly it's something that's going to always be on, but the... Or maybe you can toggle it to be... You can toggle it to be always on, but the downside of that is fuel usage. It's going to start burning your fuel quite quick. Because if it does burn your fuel fast, or... A, you know, a little bit faster. It's going to be no good for exploration because if it's always on and you're low on fuel, you've got no control over slowing your fuel usage down, have you? But if it's toggleable, you can turn it on and off. So you've got like an economy mode <laughs> and a sport mode, right? <laughs> I know I'm always relating it to cars, but it's the only way I can create an analogy oh it's going to be so simple why uh, yeah there are some things you want you to experience for yourself to what end you guys do this constantly yeah uh, nothing wrong with that thinking that being intentionally vague and, op and opaque about your game yeah, but they're not being opaque, are they? If they were, they'd be revealing everything. Oh no, that would be transparency? I don't know. Okay. Uh, about your game, somehow equates to a greater engagement. Nope. I don't think that's what they're thinking at all. I think they're more talking about the current engagement, not that they're wanting greater engagement. Yeah, I want to find out for myself tomorrow. I don't want Frontier to tell me everything now. I, I want to speculate. I want to wonder until tomorrow. What's it going to do? How is it going to work? Will it do this? Will it do that? I want to have, have that on my mind. I want to think about it. Will it be good for this? Will it be bad for that? Why do people feel they're entitled to be told every frickin' thing? Yeah. The only time that I get pissed off with them being vague is when you have those live streams where you get the community people saying, you know, well, we can't tell you too much about that, that's all we can say. That's kind of a pisser, because they either mention it or don't. You know, don't just, don't just give me, well, we've got this 
you know when they when they say um well there's a new feature coming uh on the next update we can't say anything what it's about okay so don't freaking mention it then <laughs> Don't freaking mention it. But if you tell me, like, there's a new Python coming, and you, so you now you've told me there's a new Python Mark II coming. Uh, we'll have pictures for you on the next stream. That's going to come out in the next update. That's fine. You've given me some information, but not all. I'm cool with that because now I know there's a Python Mark II coming. I know it's coming somewhere. Hopefully, I think before summertime, and. What I don't know is, how many internal slots does it have? What's its jump range? Can it do this? Is it better than the original Python in this area? Does it lack in that area? I don't need to know all those details right now. I don't want to know. I want to find out. I want to wait till it comes and find out. So, if you're going to tell me nothing, then don't tell me. Like, if you're going to say, there's a new feature, which is telling me nothing, if you there's a new feature coming uh, in the next update, but we can't go into it. Then shut up. Don't bother. But if you tell me what it is, then I don't need all the details. Just give me some vague stuff. There's a, it's a Python. Cool. We've seen the pictures. It looks nice. Awesome. It's got a lovely rear end. Love it. Uh, but the, the the details about how many hard points does it have more and does it have internals more does it ha can it do does it have more utility slots is it better for fighting can it hold more cargo i don't want them to tell me this i want to find out are you guys with me on this i don't know i know everyone's different Every, some people want to know everything like commander crag which is fine some people want to know things some people don't want to know. They prefer the surprise. It's like me handing you a present and saying, do you want me to tell you what's in it? No. It's a, Giving you the present is me telling you there's a Python. There it is. But w the details, you're going to have to open it. You're going to have to wait and you're going to have to open it. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You release these undocumented mysteries, thinking it will result in... It's not undocumented. Check Galnet. Thinking of some great aha moments. <laughs> He's having a rant. But I don't see the need. I think it's fine. I, I like that Frontier have told us it's going to be Class C. It's going to have Super Cruise Overcharge on it. The rest, you're going to find out for yourself. Cool. Fine with me can't wait something it gives me something to look forward to if all the information is there already on the screen what have I got to look forward to tomorrow I might say oh well I know what it's going to do I know how it's going to benefit I know how it's going to be a loss no point me trying it tomorrow on a live stream no point because I already know <coughs> I'm not going to... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, they did go on this one. I'm not going to read it, though. He's having a real rant, though. Why the big mystery? No one cares about the mystery. You're wrong. I do. I like the mystery. I don't want to know. Don't... Oh, I hate it when people think they can speak for everybody else. Everybody this and nobody that. Stop doing that. You are not the voice of everybody. 11,000 hours. Wow, that's a lot. No, we don't want this. No. Or I'll tell you what, what Frontier could have done, I guess, is maybe satisfied both and saying, put a spoiler thing on the forum. If you want to know how the Super Cruise overcharge will work, click this spoiler button. I'll tell you one thing, I'm not clicking that button. I don't want to know. But the problem is, Somebody will click it, and then the information will get on the internet, and everybody's going to get spoiled when they don't want to. <coughs> so, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, everybody, right? Yeah, everybody thinks I'm right on this. <laughs> Nobody thinks I'm wrong. Oh, God, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I think Frontier have done it right on this one. Oh, this is awesome. There you go. There's your super cruise over church. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, and it's a supercharger. So it's exactly what I was talking about. Oh, honestly, people are going to think I have looked at these comments before I made mine. I, I give you my word. I have not seen these comments at all. I promise you, I haven't. This is amazing. <coughs> Overcharge, supercharge. It's easy to make that d determination, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you said, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow now. I am. Yes, they could put an explanation in the game in a way that made everybody have to read it. Or well, they could follow the usual practice of people. And, uh, no, if, they, if, you, if you want to put it on Galnet as an article, then make it so that you only can read it if you want to. You have to f actually purposely go there to read about it. Personally, I'm, I'm happy not knowing until tomorrow. I can wait another day. Well, my brain can. I don't know about the rest of my body, but my brain can. Uh, but yeah, yeah, th there are ways that they could have done done it to please both groups. When I see this, guys, it reminds me of a cupcake. One of those red velvet cupcakes. I don't know why. <coughs> new players are playering. <laughs> There's a new word, guys. Playering. Yeah, we're just all playering. Is the python coming tomorrow? No, 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 no. I don't think so. If it is, it's going to be a surprise to us all. But uh, I don't think so. Don't think in tomorrow. I think they would have mentioned it if it was coming. It's not impossible. They might have. They might be keeping it from us. In which case, Commander Krog is going to be well pissed because <laughs> he wasn't told all the details. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, I think I think the Python's coming another time. Can we super cruise between systems now? I don't think it's going to be that fast. And the answer is no, you can't. Because each system has its own instance. So even if you could cover that range, somebody tried this already, you can't do it. Even if the next system is like very close to you, like 0.2 light years away jump, hyper jump, you, you can super cruise that. You can, because somebody's tried it before. You just point like you do to any normal hyper jump reticle, and you super cruise, and you just wait. Go have dinner, go have a sleep, and you wait. The problem is when you get to, when you've covered the distance, it doesn't let you go any further. It's like a wall. Somebody's tried it already. You cannot go and travel into the next star system, even with super cruise, because in order to get from Alpha Centauri to maybe a, a very close neighboring system, you have to do an instance change. It's just the way the game is. It's, it doesn't flow from one solar system into another. It doesn't do that. So the answer to your question, no. You don't need to spend days testing. You can't do it because it's an instancing thing. I should answer him, right? Um, oh, okay, maybe this guy's done it for me. It won't be possible. No, it doesn't take, it's not possible. Witch space. Isn't that, wasn't that invented in Doctor Who? Witch space. Uh, the bottleneck on super cruising between systems is the loading screen. Yeah, yeah, you need to do a hyper jump. It's the only way. It's like a, it's, it's loading a new instance of that system into your computer one system at a time you can't flow one into the other see you philip have a good one mate can't please everybody all the time don't want to i just want to read about what i i'm actually going through to see if anyone's got any in, insightful questions about the fsd and we are in the meantime traveling to hutton uh They could easily add things like reducing fuel costs. 
if you supercruise to a very close system. Yeah, unfortunately it won't be possible. But I'm just wondering though, can you... If you supercruise with overcharge, the thought process would be that it can... that it can take up more fuel, right? Not less. So I'm, I'm going to think it is going to affect fuel usage, but in, a, in, it's gonna, in that it's going to consume more. Uh, PvP buff. <clears throat> I think this is going to be a very interesting thing in PvP. It's certainly going to make for a, quite a different playstyle if one player has it and another one doesn't. And maybe the one the one that d has it is either the pirate or the trader, for example, in that kind of roleplay. It's either, yeah, and if you both have it, then they cancel each other out, you would imagine, right? So, mm. oh, here we go. Osric knows. Not being able to SC between systems isn't a bug. It's more about having to create a new instance for the destination system. The systems are not linked together in one giant instance. There is, yeah, exactly. So, the, yeah, exactly. The, ho the whole galaxy, like, isn't isn't one big instance. Mm. Yeah. So somebody, as I said, somebody did test this. They they got their ship and they they went to a system where it, they had a neighbouring system that was really really close, and they just stuck it on super cruise and just waited hours and hours and hours for it to you know, to count down. Because you know sometimes you get like one year or something on the thing and then... But you need you need to find a system that's really, really close. And they tried it. And it just hit a wall, I think. You know, like you get those boundaries on black holes and stuff when you get too close. I think it's kind of like that. Was it... Did Down to Earth do it? I don't know whether he, whether he was the one that I saw do it or whether he also, also did it. But, uh, yeah... It, it may have been him, actually. I don't know. Uh, okay. I was actually hoping we'd see people here talking about, like, speculating like we are now. Like, people have asked already about Hutton Orbital. Is it going to be faster? It's going to depend, isn't it, whether it's going to be on for permanent <coughs> or whether it's a boost thing. So yeah, C-rated FSD plus increased range G5 plus mass manager makes it exactly the same as a vanilla FSD with minus 53 integrity. Yeah, we read that before. I don't think the integrity... Is the integrity going to matter that much? 53 sounds like a big number. It depends. Depends where what the number starts at, I suppose. That's a good idea. They could invent a crossing gravity well. But can you can the game change instance in the background while you're still on it? Can that be done? I don't think so, right? Cuz wouldn't they have done something with that by now if it, if it could be done? Isn't that the reason why we have glide as well because doesn't glide when doesn't when you're gliding into a planet doesn't that change instance as well? I don't know. <coughs> yeah, that's another good point. There's no reason to supercruise to another system. It's a waste of time because you've got hyperjump. It's like, no, I'm not going to take the car to walk to the next town. Um, uh, to drive to the next town, I'll walk it. But the car's there. Yeah, but I want to walk it. It's 12 miles away. Yeah, of course. It is a waste. A waste of time. The interdiction game is centered on ships arriving at the primary star. If ships could come in from any direction at the periphery, then that part of the game would change substantially. Think hauling for background or power play and how to oppose it. Mm. Yeah, if you're doing background sim and power play stuff, it's gonna, it, the dynamics there are going to be affected as well, right? I don't know. And even stuff that you do in, uh, uh, what do you call them? Community goals. Yeah. Like, you know, go, 
we need you to fetch such and such a number of these, bring them back to this station. If you're hauling and you've got that drive on, you've got less, you can, you can probably bring back more without getting interdicted and, and all that stuff. It's not a design choice, it's called an oversight. I don't think so. I don't think they oversighted that at all. I think it's just the way that the game engine works. It's that when you get to the new system though, it does it does calculate this, but when you get to the new system, it has to create a new instance to put that new system in, and that's the thing. I think that's just the way the game engine works. <coughs> Whether they can change that instance in the background uh, as a background thing and you're in the foreground and then kind of blend the background into the foreground, do you know what I mean? Kind of seamlessly so that the player doesn't know. Mm. Sounds like a quality of life feature. Yep, it is. For people unloading FCs for CGs. Yeah, again, it will be. Uh, I play in open. Okay, let's have a look. I play in open, very good at staying alive. I guess what I'm saying is the tools we already have are honestly overly sufficient to keep us alive. Yep, my cutter at a trade. This is what I'm saying though. He's right here. The tools that you have already are sufficient. As long as you can escape interdiction, you know, if you manage to do that, <clears throat> then it's sufficient. And therefore, an overcharged super, super cruise um, will make some of this redundant, like the, the skill in evading an interdiction, specifically in PvP, um, is going to be taken away if, the, if you can't be caught. I, I would imagine that people are going to catch on quickly and both Pirate and Trader will have SCO on board their ship anyway, so... But yeah, he's right there. Mm. Overkill. We're going to have to see how they balance it, though. <laughs> Oof. Just having a moment there, guys. Yes, it does. It does indeed. People like the 128 buttons, and I can see why, if you have more than 32 already, this is a huge frickin' increase. 32 up to 128? That's frickin' massive. Yeah, that's gonna be good. There you go. All right, let's see how we're going. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're 36 minutes in, 36 and a bit. It's got 36 on the clock. Are we still accelerating? Look at the speed we're going, guys. We are still accelerating, actually. Surface scanner, too fast. It's saying that, and look how far away we are. Yeah, um, 1,775C. Oh, it's just started. Oh, no, it hasn't. I'm waiting. I'm, it's not going to reach 2,000, unfortunately. It's not going to be... Because uh, <coughs> the faster we go, the quicker we get there, and the, more we, the sooner we slow down. So it can't do it. It can't reach 2,000. It is not even possible. Um, let me have a look at the chat here. It will take up an optional internal slot and not a core internal like the booster. You reckon? That's an interesting thought. I would say it would replace it. That is an interesting thought. I don't think so though, because they're referring to it as an FSD module. <coughs> if it's an internal slot, 
and that's freaking awesome because that means we get we get the best of all the worlds we get the best of everything then we'll have our current FSD plus a, a boost but when Saul when you say it will take up an optional internal slot are you stating that as a fact do you know that from somewhere or is it just a guess I'm not convinced it's going to be but I think it's going to be a replacement to the current drive but it's not impossible but because they've named it they've called it frame shift drive I don't think that if it was a if it was an optional like in, internal slot I think they would have named it something like super cruise overdrive module they would have named it differently um, <coughs> excuse me but because they've named it frameshift drive which is exactly the same as what we have right now I think it's more to replace what we have if we want to drop down on ultimate jump range because ideally right in an ideal world we all want to have the best jump range on any ship whether it be uh, an exploration ship, whether it be a combat ship, it's always nice to have as, as good a jump range as you can, right? So wherever you're going in the in the bubble, wherever you might be doing, um, you don't have to make as many jumps. I always like to have a Felicity Farcia Grade Five upgrade on on all my ships if I can. It doesn't matter what it's doing. Doesn't matter if it's just a little vulture or something. Because especially those little ships, they don't really have amazing jump range to start with. So, but yeah, I think if it was a, if it was an internal module, that would be brilliant to, for a start. That would be awesome. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be just because they've named it the exact, the module, the exact same thing, FSD. <coughs> yeah. So we will, we will see. But I, tomorrow, also they're going to re-enable the uh, mass manager to go on the pre-engineered uh, FA, 5A, FSD drives. So I'll be taking the uh, Oliver Hardy Python back over to Felicity again and getting that done. I really wish they would enable experimentals to be pinned as well. Um, But then it would be weird, wouldn't it? Because then you'd have to have... Well, no, you could do it. Yeah, you could either have it so you could pin an experimental along with... an engineering. So if you choose increased FSD, that you can pin mass manager along with it. You know, group them both together and pin the two things together. What jump range is on this again? I can't remember. I don't want to do anything that's going to slow this ship down. So let's go. Yeah, so this has got even more jump range than the than the Anaconda does. And look at the fuel usage that we've gone through, guys. We've got a, gone through a bit of fuel there. So I think if we had overcharge on, if we do this, it, you know what would be interesting? When we get here and we, we stop the stopwatch, see how much fuel is there. We don't have anywhere to tell us the exact amount of fuel in the tank, right? We just have that line. But I can overlay the two screenshots, I guess, even though the ship does move around a little. I can overlay the screenshots and see how much extra fuel the, over, the overcharge is going to use, assuming it's going to always be on. Yeah, screenshot comparison. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, Guardian FSD booster. Exactly. So I don't think they're going to give us two, you know. But I see what you mean, digital. Yeah, it does work that way. But it has a different name. This isn't if if this module was called Super Cruise. Super Cruise booster. 
or super cruise overcharge module then yeah then then that would be a an internal slot for sure with a different name it would have to be <clears throat> but if you look clearly here you can see that Frontier have called it frameshift drive so it's going to be fitted into the same slot as your current one or in place of your current one pretty sure with that one these are just educated guesses I'm making <laughs> but I would say so oh look at this now guys we're halfway there because it was 6.2 million and now it started counting down from 3 million it's not amazing that's a screenshot right <laughs> Oh, I did it. I'm not sure I was on the right screen. Yeah, three million guys. I'm just going to slightly tweak my ship just to make sure it's directly pointing in the middle. Maybe they left off the module bit to keep us guessing. No, they've actually said it. New rating C frame shift drive modules. Now, I, I it's wishful thinking. I I, I wish. I'd, I wish you were going to be right, Saul. I really do. It would be awesome if it was an internal module. And maybe even that was discussed. Don't know. But... No. I, I don't know. I, I've known Frontier for long enough. This is going to be a replacement. So now, essentially, we're going to have three different FSDs to choose from. <clears throat> the stock one, the pre-engineered one, or the one that has the overcharge facility on it, but can't jump as far. So, talking about power, um, if we look, I don't want to miss my slot here, but if we look at power, uh, let's have a look. So we've got the frameshift drive here. I don't know, does it tell us the amount of power? I suppose we can have a look. So power, is this the consumption? 0.57? On a 6C? Okay, 0.57. But if we move back up to a 6A, and max that out. Okay, now the power is 0.86. Okay, so it's not a massive difference at all. It's 0.3 difference in power. <clears throat> but here's the thing. I reckon the overcharge function will make it consume more power. But because it's a class... C or, or rate, uh, a C rated one then that power is going to drop as well so it's going to be the power rating of the 5C or the 6C which is a 0.57 but it because it's got the overcharge it might be 0.70 it might be 0.7 so not as much as the 6A but more than the standard 6C guys with me on this one if you get killed on the way to Hutton you spawn there now oh really that's nice of them that's a quick that's a quick way to get to Hutton then surely but then you're not allowed a free anaconda <laughs> yeah so this is what I'm I'm thinking I, I'm going to go with it will replace your current FSD it will not give you the jump range that the A-rated one can manage it will consume more fuel and it'll be the only thing I can't guess is whether it's going to be always on or whether it's going to have a finite lifespan based on fuel usage or a, or the fact that it can only spool up and give you over overcharge or whatever for a certain amount of time and then it needs to cool off 
and recharge up again? I don't know. Hee <laughs> hee. I can't wait. <clears throat> I can't wait to find out. We are decelerating, guys. It's official. Slowly, but we are now on the descent, approaching LaGuardia Airport. We have begun to descend. Please fasten your seatbelts. Yeah. Interesting, eh, guys? Waiting for tomorrow. It's kind of cool. I didn't know what to expect when they were doing the whole uh, Titan drives, you know, we need the drive technology components, whatever they, whatever they were called, in order to work, to use the technology from that. Never even occurred to me that it would affect Super Cruise. Nope, didn't even think about that. Because when you think of FSD, for me mainly, I'm thinking of Hyperjump. So I thought main, maybe, or maybe, right, it could be something where it grants you a little bit of extra jump range, but its, it's little ace up its sleeve is that it's immune to hyperdiction, right? So you cannot be hyperdicted by a goidy because it's come from a Titan technology and so the goids cannot hyperdict you through the through the tunnel. But then how much lifespan does a a drive like that have if all the titans are being wiped out? I mean the goids are always going to be here in the game, right? You would say? <clears throat> Is there going to be a new anaconda? We know there's going to be a new Python, but it'd be interesting if it had a double FSD slot. It's reminding me of a phone with a with with a, two SIM cards. <laughs> yeah, and you can switch from one to another. Wouldn't that be a nice little feature, eh? So you've got you've got a, a pre-engineered FSD with mass manager in one for your hyper jumps. And when you want to go plantage scanning for you on the planets far away... Whoa! Oh, hey, Sol! Rusty, thanks you, Sol Myers, for your kind donation of... Oh, thank you! Thanks for the great conversation. Oh, you're welcome, my man. Very welcome. I'm glad you like it, man. Thank you, Sol. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I don't normally do live streams based on this kind of stuff when Frontier introduced this, but I was I was intrigued with this one. Which brings me back to that point that I, I wouldn't have been intrigued if Frontier had told me all the details. And I like the intrigue. It's like I, I don't want to know who 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 killed the butler until I've read the story. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Yes. Hmm. Two million light seconds to go, guys. Hold on to your seats. We are, to be fair, though, we are traveling at a hell of a rate of speed. 1,700. I can't remember why... Um, yeah, it was one five. It wasn't two five. Two five, it wouldn't be capable of doing it. Yeah, I remember doing Hutton Orbital Run years ago. Years ago, right? Long time ago. In a Cobra Mark III. It was the first time I'd ever done Hutton Orbital in, in my Elite Dangerous life. And I remember the Cobra reaching 1,500 C. I remember that. This has exceeded that. I don't know if it's because it, it's lighter, because it is an exploration ship where the Cobra was not, uh, and so it's managed to hit 1777, I think it went to, right? <clears throat> so, so far, guys... 
Get frigged. What? 52 minutes? On the stopwatch? Is that right, guys? What the hell? Fifty three minutes coming up to now. Is it? Guys, tell me we didn't start this fifty three minutes ago. But I, I only looked a little time before and it was twenty minutes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure I did it in forty five minutes in the Cobra. I don't know, May I don't know, maybe my memory's wrong. I remember two numbers from when we did it. I remember 1500C and 45 minutes when I did it in the Cobra. I can't be right then, right? Yeah, that, that must be wrong. Well, hell, okay. Jeez. Well, the clock's counting down, and the, the countdown clock there is just about, just about going quicker than normal time. Isn't it? Or is it about normal time? 19, 18, 59, 1858. Is that counting down seconds correctly, or is it a little bit different? <clears throat> Can you imagine? dropping in here guys we, there's a mission please take <laughs> please take this back to what was it called Aldin or something Aldin Prospect <laughs> not a problem easy no problem at all that's that's an easy mission to do it's the other way around that's the problem taking it to, to Hutton Orbital because there's no quick way to get there to Aldin it's a piece of cake just just jump out the system. I would just go to LHS and back and boom we're in. So yeah any of these systems tomorrow guys we're going to be looking I'm going to be looking in these high-tech systems for for this drive. I'm going to want to go to the higher pop places though. Whoa hello there you go high-tech high security high-tech both L19021 screenshot. That's what I'm going to go, I think, uh, to try and grab one. We'll do a stream tomorrow and we'll test it all out and see what it's all about if you guys want or you, if you prefer to have a look yourselves. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to stream it anyway. So I can, I can get a, a first hand account of what it does and how it functions at the same time that I'm streaming rather than. You know, do the uh, the other way where I find out all about it, I get all the knowledge, and then I do a, a video and say, right guys, this is all about it. No, I, I like to do it the other way. I want to find out as I... I want to find out along the same time as you guys do, so... <clears throat> Two hours, Roger, Jesus. 30, uh, yeah, 36 minutes. Yeah, you're right. Well... It's currently showing 56 minutes and 37 on my stopwatch. Honestly, didn't ex didn't think it was going to be that long. But I, I think it's a test we have to do, guys, just in case the Super Cruise Overcharge is a, is a system that is always on. So you're always going to get faster Super Cruise no matter where you go, no matter what you do. Which I hope I hope it's always on. That would be cool. And I hope it doesn't consume too much fuel. I, and I hope Frontier have thought of that. I think they have. I think they will have done that. That it, you know, to make it consume more fuel because unless they found some technological way around it where not only do you get faster speed, but it's more economical. That's possible. <clears throat> they like watching us speculate. 
because it gives them ideas very possible. And I'm happy to speculate. I love it. I, I love having the conversation and hearing what other people think and what they think it might have, or what you know, what they would prefer to it to have. I want. I want this conversation. It's. It, I don't call it hype. It's not hype. I am a little bit hyped up about it because I'm interested in it. But I'm not hyped up to the point where if it doesn't do what any of the things that we've thought that it's, it's going to be a game breaker and or let's slag off Frontier. Unless they completely balls it up somehow, then we'll see. But I, I don't think so. I think it's just going to be a here's a cool new device, but you will have to compromise on your jump range. <clears throat> but in, on, on the upside, you get you get this cool thing. So that'd be nice. It's the same with a supercharger, right? Going back to that reference, or a turbo. You put you put a you put a turbo or a supercharger on a car. Okay, your upside is you've got more power, you've got more speed. Cool. The downside is the life of your engine is reduced. It's going to be because you're putting more pressure on the internals of the engine. So all these little one liter cars that have got turbos, they're going to have less life than they would if they didn't have one. Stands to reason you're putting more pressure through the engine. It's not going to last as long. There's your downside. But it's going to last long enough for the, lo for the time you're going to own the car, probably. So you don't need to worry. But yeah, forced induction, guys. <laughs> it puts more strain, reduces your lifespan. But then again, you can always swap an engine, right? Put another one in. <laughs> That's what petrol heads do. We don't care. It'll kill the engine in six months, but in those six months, I'm going to have the time of my life. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I'd like to see it consume more fuel. Um, what if it also... Hmm, guys. What if... Although I don't think they're going to do this because it would be a bit... Yeah, it would be a bit cruel to do it, I suppose. Mm, unless it was optional. Like, let's say, let's say they create a situation where it, you have the FSD with a super cruise overcharge on it, but you can turn it on and off, or you can trigger it. So, for example, like right now, I'm traveling, my thrusters are flat out speed, but if I press the accelerate button again to go quicker, obviously it can't, but if I pressed it again, it would trigger the overcharge and then we'd be zooming. And then if I, if I, pressed, if I pressed the decelerate button, even just tap it, it cancels, it disables the overcharge. You know what I mean? So toggling it that way. If they did it that way, what they then could do, I'm giving them too many ideas, I hope Frontier aren't listening. What they then could do is, if you choose to use the overcharge function, then it's going to reduce the health of your thrusters. Your thrusters integrity is going to start going from 100 down to 99, down to 98, and the longer you use it, the more that's going to degrade. So at certain points when you reach 75, 80% on your thrusters, you're going to have to get them repaired. Otherwise, you won't have full speed or engine efficiency because it's putting more... It's putting more pressure on those thrusters. Or, yeah, even though it's not technically your thrusters that you're using in Super Cruise, right? They're not really on. Yeah. But you guys know what I mean? Just that say, the thrusters are not on. So actually, it probably wouldn't be your thrusters. It would be that it would it would knock the integrity of the frameshift drive down. Yes, that makes more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah, if, yeah. If you're in super cruise, that your integrity starts to creep down just a little as as you use it. However, if it's always on, I don't think they should do that as a mechanic. 
if it's always on, then just leave it at 100% because it should be then a module that has that feature and can cope with it without losing integrity of, of, the, of the module. Oh, I like it. So many questions, man. Uh, uh, we'll answer them all tomorrow, but it's going to be cool. Usage per hour. That's a good one. Yeah, 1.57 we're getting on this. I'm going to write that down. So that's how much... You're right. That's a, that's a very good point. So yeah, we're using 1.5... Whatever it is. Gallons. Tons. No, it's tons, isn't it? 1.57 tons, isn't it? Yeah, per hour. So yeah, you're right. It might be two. Two tons or something with the overcharge on. Gallons. Can you imagine if it was gallons? <laughs> gallons per day. <laughs> awesome. Centiliters. <laughs> oh, man alive. Well, we are still decelerating, but we are still traveling at one heck of a rate, though. We're still going really quick. So even though we're just under a million light seconds, we've only got 11 minutes on the clock to cover that. That ain't too bad at all. Not too shabby. Because yesterday's high grade, that was 97,000 light seconds, took... What was it? Four minutes? Five minutes or something? And this is going to do ten times that amount in eleven minutes. Not bad. Get your motor running. Run out on the highway. Who did that one? See, I know the songs, I just can't get the groups or the band. Get your motor running. And I don't know why I think if I sing it again, I'll remember. Going on the highway. I know somebody in the chat's going to know. <laughs> uh, yeah. One hour, five minutes, guys. Somebody's going to leave a comment on this stream saying, Oh my God, how did it take two and a half hours? just to talk about <laughs> this one thing. Welcome to Rusty's world. I do think the overcharge will have more integrity degradation. It would make sense. Running stuff hotter and harder makes... Exactly. Steppenwolf. Thank you, Sky. Thank you. I would not have guessed that. But yeah, thank you for that. Good song, by the way. Uh, it would make, yeah, you're right. Running stuff hotter and harder makes stuff wear out faster. Hence my analogy with the superchargers and turbos. Exactly. It does indeed. Mmm. This is why I would prefer... You see, the, with car engines today, you see the, the, the way the trend is going. I would much prefer a 1.6 litre engine than a 1 litre with a turbo. Because the 1.6 isn't going to have as many issues. It's not going to have any turbo problems. It's just a naturally aspirated 1.6 versus a, a 1 litre turbo. These are little engines, and they're putting these turbos... Okay, the turbos aren't massive. Jesus, what am I talking about? They're very small turbos. But it's it's a way to keep emissions and stuff down, right? Oh, guys, I should tell you, yeah. On my... I did my car's MOT test. I don't know what you guys call it, where you are. Uh, but, yeah, I did the MOT, and uh, which is the, the yearly vehicle inspection to make sure it's roadworthy and everything. And... On the emissions test, don't forget this is a this is a car that's going to be 22 years old in July, 
and it's always passed the emissions test. And I believe it's it's ULES friendly as well, which is the ultra low emission zone. It can go into those, okay? <coughs> and they they stuck the pipe up the exhaust and they did the the thing the the emissions. And there's there's a couple of there's a there's more readings, but two of the readings on there was what's guys help me out here. What is CO? CO2 is carbon dioxide. What is CO? Do they mean CO2 and just couldn't put a little number two on it or something? I don't know what, I don't, I honestly don't know what just CO on its own is. Is it carbon oxide? <laughs> anyway, they needed to test CO and H carbon monoxide. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is carbon monoxide. That's what comes out the friggin' pipe. Yeah, sorry, I was... God, what a silly moment I just had. Cobalt. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> so, yeah, carbon monoxide. Thank you so much. Of course it is. Frickin' hell, I'm turning into a loony. Yeah, so they tested the CO and the HCO, which is the, the hydrocarbons, right? So... Oh, um, what do they call it? Oh my god. I'm just not, my brain's just stopped functioning. Uh, when they, when they say, um, Google is your friend, never has this been more true. Uh, give me a sec, guys. HCO is hydrocarbons, right? Coming out of the exhaust pipe. Meh. Anyway, so those were tested. And it has, a, it has a, a range and a limit that it is allowed to exist in. And the actual result from your car. So the carbon monoxide... Um, I wish I had the paper here with me. But the carbon monoxide... Hold on. All right, I can be more accurate now. <sighs> okay, so CO and HC, right? So hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. Thank you guys for letting me know about that. So the car was idling around. They did a fast idle test between two, two and a half thousand and three thousand revs. The carbon monoxide limit is it has to be equal to or less than 0.2%. So they don't give you a big window on there. My car, result, 0.0. So either it was putting out so little it didn't register. 0.0. How is that possible? Anyway... <laughs> Does that mean I can put a tube inside the car and it won't kill me? Uh, hydrocarbons, the limit is equal to or less than 200 parts per million. 200. My car, 32 parts per million. Well under the limit. Absolutely. And then they did a natural idle test, which is just leaving the car to idle. And the monoxide their limit is equal to or less than 0.3 and my car emitted 0.0 that's pretty good for a nearly 22 year old car right and don't forget it's a three liter six cylinder engine it's pretty good yeah and I see people that you know got the same car as me similar ones and they go and they say oh it's it, it didn't pass the emissions, it didn't pass the emissions. 
and I'm so well within the limits. So um, it makes me think, if you have a car that does not doesn't pass, the one that doesn't, what do you do to it so that it does pass? Is it just a oh, air-fuel mixture thing? It might be running too rich or gasket something busted and th I don't know. But yeah, I was quite really proud of what my car did there. It's always passed emissions, but I've never had a certificate that's got all the numbers on the back. All the exact numbers. At least I haven't seen these before. And it just says pass, 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 pass. <laughs> yeah. Engine, what? Engine temperature measurement by manual observation of the cooling pipes. Engine speed measurement by manual observation. I believe the MOT test or the, the, the TOOF inspection, I think they call it in Germany, is very is a lot more tougher. It's it's very, very strict, I believe that one. What was the reading when they turned it on? <laughs> no, it doesn't put any smoke out the back or anything. It does. It puts out like a vapor, like a, a, a cloud, but it's uh, it's white. It's like um, condensation, I think, in the exhaust. And even if I go for a, a drive for half an hour and I bring it back, this you can still kind of get that condensation cloud coming out. It's just liquid in the exhaust. But in terms of bad stuff like... The stuff you don't want, which is blue blue smoke or grey smoke, because blue and grey smoke mean two different things, okay? And I don't have any of that. Nothing. Oh, it's a D-cat? Oh, no, mine's got the cats on it. Yeah. What I, don't, what I have not working or disabled by the engine map is the secondary lambda sensor, oxygen sensor, which is the one after the cat. The one before the cat is functional, but the one after is not. But it doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't affect the MOT at all. Right, so very soon, guys, we're going to get the message to jump out. The moment we do, the moment I press and you hear that sound for jumping out, we stop the clock. Getting a super cruise baseline. Uh, yep, 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 yep. That's what we're up to. Sorry, freaky. Didn't see your 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 question there. Sorry, man. Yeah, just getting a. We're just timing the run, so that when we when we fit the super cruise overdrive on, overdrive overcharge tomorrow, um, we'll do this run again. Hopefully, it's not going to take <laughs> over an hour. The question is, is it going to be quicker? Probably, if it works, if it's on permanent. But the, if the question more is, how much quicker is it going to be? Is Hutton Orbital going to be so much more accessible? How much will it get it down by? So many questions have been asked today, Freaky. But it's cool, interesting stuff. The way that... Uh, SCO is going to change, like, the game dynamics and stuff. It's going to be interesting times to be a pirate or a, or a trader, isn't it? <laughs> the engine blows up. Yeah, I had a turbo fitted on the Diamondback. Twin turbo. What's it? Doesn't it have like three engines on this or something? I can't tell. Doesn't it have a top one and two side ones, or am I thinking of something else? Yeah, it's got one on each wing and one right right down the pipe in the middle there. Yeah, it's got three boosters on it. So yeah, it's got oh, it's got a turbo on each one. Wouldn't work in space. There's no air. <laughs> but the mechanics, uh, the mechanic who fitted it, didn't think of that. You need air for a turbo. You need air for a supercharger. And we don't have any. <laughs> uh, a 30% increase in acceleration. 
You know what, Star Warrior? I think you probably might be right. You know why? Because you get a 30% reduction in jump range. And it's just that perfect yin-yang give and take, isn't it? A 30% increase, you're probably not wrong. I, I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah. So what would that make it then? If, if you reach Hutton in an hour and 20 minutes and then reduce that by 30%, Well, I mean, we're, we're just about hitting one hour 20 now. And we're nearly there. So let's say one hour 20. You're going to reduce that time at 30%. You're going to reduce it by... 24, 25 minutes, something like that. Yeah, so you're going to bring it down to 56, exactly. Is it worth it? I mean, we're not doing Hutton orbital runs every freaking day. <laughs> you know, this is, this is an extreme case, this is an extreme example. But uh, is 30% worth sacrificing that jump range for? Mm. <laughs> I mean, phew. yeah. I think you might be right, Star Warrior. I think 30% would seem right. At an extreme, they may go to, it might be 50% better. Because you know how many times you get upgrades that when you go f full blast to grade 5, it's, you get 50% off on this and 50% extra this. But yeah, you might be right. It, they, may ba they may perfectly balance it that way. You lose 30% jump range. We give you 30% extra super cruise speed. Yeah, I'll buy that. I'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah, will will it uh will it buff the, the, the D cell? Yeah, because then you've gotta you've gotta slow down sooner as well, haven't you? Which is gonna that changes things too. No, I don't think so, Freaky. It's not an engineering thing. It's just a module that's going to be... It's going to be an outfitting. So it's just going to be there. But I think only in high-tech systems. Because they were talking about... They were wording it in that... In, to that Words to that effect. Saying that it would... <clears throat> um, heavily hinted. Yeah, it said it will be available especially in, so therefore not exclusive to, but especially in more technologically advanced markets. So for me, that's high-tech systems. Um, so yeah, I, w I would definitely go for those and uh, grab one from there. But it's going to be it's going to be an outfitting, so you should be able to purchase it like any other module. And um, it's only rated C, so you will not get a 5A or a 5B or a 5D. It's gonna be it's gonna be C, and that's it. So you're losing you're losing ultimate jump range. It's that trade-off. Yes, that's right, Martin. Yeah, we just went through that as well. It's great to see that that was. Uh, a bug as opposed to anything else that it wasn't it didn't turn out to be a decision by Frontier to close that off and they are allowing you to put the experimental on surprising we only discussed it yesterday pretty sure our stream didn't had no effect because it was at one o'clock in the morning when we found out 
<clears throat> but it's co just coincidental that it's just doing that now, which is good. Right, guys, we are ready to drop and stop the clock. Do not loop of shame, Rusty. Do freaking not. As soon as it hits the seven, now. I'll mess this up. What about the gravity well? It's going to slow me down. Okay, just try and be as efficient as possible. Stay away from the sun. I'll do the same tomorrow, hopefully. Stay away from the sun. Just be efficient. Okay, so we stayed away from the sun for a few seconds. Just constantly trying to keep it dead center. I remember, yeah, remember that time, guys, on, on, on a mission? I picked up a mission, didn't realize it was for Hutton Orbital. Oh, I should have done a mission. I could have brought one with me. D deliver the data for two million. Bastards. Yeah, and I didn't realize it was Hutton Orbital, and then I decided I was going to travel here anyway, just as punishment for not realizing. I punished myself. Okay. Clock stopped. Okay, guys. Uh, that was, I'm going to write it down, it was one hour, 23 minutes, 55 point, I don't think I need the tenths of seconds, do I? 55 seconds. Just under one hour, 24. There you go. One hour, 23.55. Let's go get our mug and also our free conda. See, it's a good thing we didn't say, oh, I know, we'll stop the clock when we, when we dock. No, I, I, I knew not to do that because in case we got this issue. Why are there so many people here? It takes ages to get here. <clears throat> Docking request denied. Docking request denied. Docking request granted. I like how the we're, we are now stationary, okay? Engines have powered down and the fuel still says it's 0.85 per hour. Shouldn't that be zero now? <laughs> hey, Zonta! Oh, we were discussing the, the new module coming tomorrow with the, the new FSD drive that has Super Cruise Overcharge. Ah, got to consume fuel to power the ship. Okay, so that means if you if you take away that one that 0 0.85 from the 1.57 we were consuming in flight, then you'd have the amount that the fuel is. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's yeah I do. You'd have the amount that the FSD is consuming, right? You'd have to go back to the beginning of the streams on time. <laughs> the specs, it's a compromise, I think. It's a compromise thing. You won't, you, you're going to be compromised. Look at these, Jesus. You're going to be compromising jump range for having overcharge, I th we think. Okay, then you've got to come back here again. The payouts on these are tremendous.
Not so much here. Source and return. Are you kidding? So I'm going to go out, get 36 units of grain from the next system, and then spend an hour and 24 minutes to bring them back to you for 336,000 credits. What dream are you having? No one's doing this. It's worth doing these ones, getting out there and, you know, killing some ships and then coming all the way back here to get paid. There's some good payments here. 30, 39 million, I think, was one that we saw. Yeah, there you go. Was it 81 ships or something? God, I wish it would click. 81. Syria, by the time you've done 81 ships, though, the Sirius Corporation, if you have any good reputation with them, you'll be losing that. Yeah, so, guys, there we have it. Tomorrow's update. So, as we said, it's uh, servers offline at 8 UK time. So 9 UTC. Back on 12. So 1 UTC. And there she is. Also, to note that, and for people with it, big killer boss level input devices, this. That's going to please some folks. Very nice. Yeah, apparently there was a 32 button limit, now there's 128. Massive, massive increase. Just in case you needed to use the 96 other buttons, right? Super duper duper cruise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Even with, even, it, let's assume Star Wars is right, and let's assume it is a 30% increase in speed. Would it make those missions more worth to do? Because it totally knocks, we'll be able to do it in. in under an hour, just a tad under an hour. Would it be worth it? I mean, I don't know. Don't think so. An hour's an hour still, right? Rating C only. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it, Zonta. So you cannot have an A rated full spec killer <coughs> upgraded Felicity Farsi, your upgraded engineered drive, plus the overcharge. You can't have both. It's the old yin-yang. We give with one hand, we take with the other. There you go. A look at... Oh, you... Guys. Oh, I wish he was on screen long enough. Who does he look like? Whitley comes on again, and I hope not, not too long. Who does that guy look like to you? To me, I see one face. Obviously, I only see one. But I mean, what I what I mean is, I only see that he looks like one particular celebrity. Arthur, who the. No, this guy, Robert Patrick, Terminator 2. The, the Terminator 2 guy, the, the, the one that wasn't Arnold. The T-1000, was it? It doesn't look like Obsidian Ant, no. <laughs> Isn't it? Don't know, just the face. Maybe not the hair's the same, but he, that's Robert Patrick to me. Excuse me. That, this dude, excuse, hello? No, okay. <clears throat> Who 
Which is the wavy one? Uh, I don't think these guys do it, but there are people wandering around, Will. Yeah, wait well, it comes up again, guys, and tell me it's not the T-1000 from Terminate... Look, Terminal 2, see? <laughs> Terminator 2. Come on, put him on screen. You know you want to. Look where we are, guys. Hot and frickin' orbital. Oh, my God. You know you've journeyed when you get here, so... If the bar runs out of drinks, they're in serious trouble because everyone's coming here looking to to relax and chill. Oh, he does look like GTA 5, Michael. Yeah, he does as well. There's just yeah, there's a similarity there, isn't there? That is that's true. Transport work. I've got something important that needs dealing with. I'll bet you do, Renato. I'll bet you do. We'll give it one more one more flick. Yeah, he does look like him. <laughs> True enough. There he is. Terminator. Is this the home of John Connor? Mm. Guys, are, you are there any extra I don't need them here, but... Need a weapon upgrading? I've got the best stock in the system. Oliver Hardy does. Oh, what if they had some really cool stuff here? Would I come back for it? It would have to be grade three plus engineered for me to come all the way back here on my other account. All our skins are guaranteed brand new. Take a look. Did you say skins? Anything else you need? Come back when you're ready. Oh, my... Twingy chest. I flew here, Zonta. Uh, just did a. We came here just to see how long it would take and then compare it with the new drive tomorrow. Okay. All right, let's say we were going to do... I don't know. Anything. That one. It's in this system, but it's 6.3 million light seconds. Have you noticed how it doesn't say 0.22 light years here? Like it does on the reticle when you're flying, it actually puts it in light seconds. Now, I ask you, who the frig's taken on this mission? Uh, it took 1 hour 23 minutes and 55 seconds. Point 12. <laughs> yeah, who's taken this on? Mind you, you do get one genetic research. So, 141,000. So they don't pay you per mile. I think we've figured that out. Right, let's fly back, guys. <laughs> As if. Yeah, so I guess... Do we end the stream there, guys? I mean... That's kind of the thing covered, isn't it? Only took me two and two hours fifty minutes to cover the subject. Do you spend two hours and a half explaining something that could have been explained in ten minutes? Me, 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 me. There are people out there explaining it in ten minutes. Go and see their videos. That's what I would say. <laughs> I don't do it that way. I want to discuss it. Discuss and integrate and, and what do you call it? With people. That begins with I. It's not, it's not integrate, is it? Interact. Jesus. Okay. Back home, guys. 
getting back home was it's going to be considerably faster than it took to get here. Considerably. Yeah, talk at length, have good discourse with people. That's the whole idea. But that's why we're here. I mean, if we were at an elite meet and I was sat down with somebody, I could sit and discuss elite for hours. You know? So, yeah. Um, that's what I want. I want, the, I want to have the discussion. And not just, you know, hey, I think this, I think that. Bye. No. It's not, it's not me. It's not my style, man. Not my style. So, why hasn't it put Jameson on the compass, guys, when I specifically plotted the route to Jameson, right? Mmm. Which, if we, like a distance like this, what's, what would be the point of using Super Cruise Overcharge on a distance like this? By the time it's powered up, it's ready to slow down again. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how the benefits outweigh the the losses and stuff. But I, I think for piracy and for trading and stuff, it's going to be quite useful. And I have to work on the theory, cur the current theory that NPCs and pirates maybe not going to have them. It would be cool if they k randomly gave them to bounty uh, NPC bounty hunters and NPC pirates. But it would be nice to have super crews in general speed it up a little. That would be cool. I don't know if it's going to include any automation, so I don't. I don't. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, I. I don't see them putting any kind of like self, self driving or self flying in this. I don't know. Icon, Romeo Delta Echo. We are happy to have you, Commander. Acceleration and deceleration will be buffed. Yeah, I, it may be that it will buff it on the ship with that drive fitted that it'll kind of to put it in car terms it'll remap your engine so to speak to bay two but can you buff the d-cell how you'd have to have more because space is space right you slow down when physics slows you down unless you put some more retro thrust on. If you put more backwards thrust on, you can. You know, it's a shame that they've spotted that uh, the audio is not going to work on some ships. I hope it's not. I hope the Diamondback isn't one of those. I want to hear the audio. Will will uh, will try it on a number of ships, I think. Meters Might put one on the Corvette. Although I don't see a particular use for it on there, but... And how much is it going to cost? A lot? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be anything like prohibitive or anything like that. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. I'm not sure, but I, I, they, I think they would have maybe said on that. Yeah. Could be Star Warrior. Could be. They're going to have to kind of really, aren't they? I mean, because otherwise it's. 
otherwise the benefit of SEO is only going to really be for medium to long distances. For short distances, you're not going to get any benefit from it. Really, not too much. Instead of getting there in 20 seconds, you might get there in 15. You know, it's like, eh, you know. So, so yeah, if they can if they can make it speed up and slow down faster as well, then it's kind of an all-encompassing, you know, speed buff kind of thing. I fancy doing a mission, guys. On the ground. Haven't done one for a while. Let's do one. Let's see if there's a scav mission. Oh, silly ass. Yeah, yeah, Star Warrior could be. Maybe you can drop out earlier, later. I don't know. Star Wars law. Let's put it this way. Compared to the people who are really, really, really into it, they've got all the figures and all the books and the magazines. No, I wouldn't be able to know more than those guys. I'm, I like Star Wars. I've seen all the films. But in terms of the actual, the whole lore behind the whole stories, no, I'm not really into it that much. Unless he means Star Warrior. <laughs> Don't know. But yeah, no, for me, no. So let's just round this off with a mission if we can, guys. Actually, we need this. Oh, frickin' hell. You don't really get the, the scav mission so much. But I don't mind doing these settlement massacres, providing that the members are all criminals. There you go, cr criminal faction. Now, does that mean that even though the system is not anarchy, that I won't get notoriety because they're criminals, right? No, it's not illegal. It doesn't say illegal here. So 19 of them, guys, we've got to take. at Salati. <clears throat> I'm not bothered about the rewards. I just want to do the mission. Okay, medium security then. But we don't get notoriety, right? Because they're a criminal faction. Oh, we haven't taken the mission yet, idiot. Okay, can't get to the galaxy map. I may have to make a phone call to guys after this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, Star Warrior. I don't know about the obvious quest. 
I know that my HTC Vive works very nicely. Well, I, that's the thing, Meta. I don't know if I got her. It's not bad enough, but we'll see. I think I'll know when I'll know. Ship uncoupled. Moderate speed on exit. intuition. My intuition says if I hadn't gone on the treadmill today I wouldn't have this. Let's just see. I'm going to let it play out for a little while. See if it calms down. <laughs> What's that freaky? Is that like when your time's up? But yeah, no, it'll be all right. It's not painful. It's just like, like I pulled a muscle or something. And it isn't, it's not localized in the heart area. It's my, it's my whole chest. And it only twinges, like if I move forward, it'll do it. If I move back and relax on the chair, I don't feel a damn thing. So <laughs> it's, it's a it's got to be a muscular thing in which case that's fine right where are we going right if i'm not mistaken guys and i'm not because i know i'm not that is named after bruce mccandless right was he not i know he's an astronaut but didn't he also pilot one of the space shuttles bruce mccandless but no candles but anyway he's candleless right anyway so let's go Let's go kill some nice people. Huh? Okay, so the mission must be described a bit differently then. Search for targets. Okay, 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 okay. Nah, I just don't know how a treadmill would uh, cause chest muscles to do that, but I did, I have, been, I have been increasing the speed, but just to my normal walking speed, and I was on the phone and, you know, answering, answering Facebook messages at the same time and wasn't out of breath. I've also been lifting, like, lifting a, a gallon of water up to fill my glass up from the side of the bed so maybe stretching out over the side like that with a big heavy bottle of water that's probably not helping anything so who the frick knows actually i'm in the wrong place here there where am i going here, right? So this one we can go to, guys. Military. Salati Drug Empire. Criminal faction. That's where we're going. Is it targeted? And yet... On the other side, where my arm's normally been feeling the dodgy, my arm actually feels fine at the moment. Perfect. <clears throat> Which is a rare moment. It was cold this morning, and my left arm was colder than my right arm this morning again. But right at this present moment, right now, it just feels like a normal arm. A little bit more achy, but I am using the joystick in that hand, so... Yeah. Who knows? And I forgot to bring my water in here, so I need to grab that as well. In fact, I'm going to grab the water while we're traveling here.
here we go. Right. Anyway, if the pain in my chest is unrelated and it's just because of treadmill stuff, then it'd be nice to know, obviously. But if it is that, then I'm fine with it. I'll put up with it and I'll keep going on the treadmill. It would just be nice to know. But I won't definitively know anything more until Friday. Unless I need emergency services before then, but I don't think... It doesn't seem to be. I think it seems to be managing okay. Blood pressure is stable, like it's been all week. It's the same. It's high, but it's it hasn't gone higher. In fact, it's, it's dipped a little, if anything. Which is good. So blood pressure-wise, yeah. It's, it's not too bad. Need to bring it down a little. I think what I'm worried more about is my cholesterol level. I want to see what that is. But I won't find that out on Friday. They'll take the blood, but I won't get the results back for a day or two. So hopefully they won't ring me up and say, right, we've got your blood. Pack a bag. <laughs> I got pains everywhere guys I got one like from my chest going around under my armpit to the back I just got a twinge there and that's got to be completely unrelated it comes and goes it's age guys we're all getting older <laughs> yeah Google <laughs> oh Google sometimes it works the other way around though sometimes you put your symptoms in and Google says well, it could just be, uh, you think it's the worst, and then Google comes back and says, well, it's usually down to just a nervous, a nerve pinch, or you, maybe you've just twisted something. And you go, oh, yeah, that's, that's what it is, yeah. And then you dismiss, you dismiss it when it actually isn't. You went back to 12 hour days. What, working 12 hours? Jesus. Screw that, man. I couldn't do that. Good that you're okay, though, matey. Right, this will be the first ground mission I've done for a wee while. What we, what are we wearing? Maverick Stealth Knight. That's the one we want. Uh, but it's not night time though. All it means is it's got night vision. Uh, but yeah, daytime here guys, so that's good. <laughs> Gain damage. I think we've all had that. Yeah, I don't really fancy statins, to be honest. I know my brother-in-law my brother -law had them. It made him feel ill, really ill. I would not take them under those circumstances. Anyway, well, let's get down here, guys, and focus on death. Look at the ships orbiting, though. I haven't got any mines. Now, I'm not going to be treated as a threat initially, so I can actually go quite close in. But we can hide behind here, which is good. Is that a Goliath? Oh, shoot. If the alarms go off, I might have to dismiss the ship. Because that Goliath's going to damage my ship heavily.
<laughs> to do your homework to. Look at this thing. Do not want to mess with a Goliath. Uh, we're going to have to turn the alarms off, guys. Because that thing hanging around, if the alarms go up, it's going to attack my ship. And then uh, my ship's going to be in trouble. It's not like it's a Corvette, it's just a little Diamondback. It's been such a while since I've done these. Look at that Goliath looking at me. None of your warrants involve us. I have warrants? No back windows, nothing. Skylights? No. Can we sit on this ledge? He's a three. Can I scan the bugger? He's always going to notice I'm there, isn't he? Doesn't reach. Oof. That's a killer one there, Star Warrior. Turn around every now and then I get a turn around, boy. I need that sweet spot, don't I? It's just him, right? So... If I can get him so he his eyes can't see... <clears throat> yeah, Santa, I got that. I just want to be in a position where I can scan his body, but his body's always freaking moving. But if they make it so that, right now, he can't see me, shouldn't be able to. Gotcha. Now, just don't get scanned. Let's see if there's any terminals out here. Or a habitat that we can have a walk around in. We cannot get scanned. Not until we get the alarms off. Commander. 
warning you, this is a no- ah! Entering restricted area. That always freaks me out when it's me that's doing the frickin' door opening. Oh, I don't have my app running, do I? No. I need Elite Dangerous Material Helper to provide the overlay. A scooter. Right, um, give me a sec guys, just get this material helper running. <clears throat> okay. So that's good, and that's good. No alarms because we've disabled the buggers. I'm not even particularly shopping for anything either. But I know a good weapon component when I see one. Right, so we're going to wipe out this building. Uh, We've left it, haven't we? Good. So make sure that's this floor done. Just a minute, Commander. You pilot bed types are usually busy. Scan Always detected. legal work, right? Ah! Oh shite. He didn't see me do it. Nothing here. Continuing sweep. So he'll calm down. I think he's coming up though. I've got nowhere to go. Must be downstairs. It'll calm down soon. We need Oliver Hardy to do one of these guys. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's recording it. So we've got two so far. 17 more to go. If there's not 17 people here, we'll have to go somewhere else. We'll reinstance this place. Sniper Ghost Warrior, baby, just in case you were wondering.
Oh, the desk is back. I wonder if that. I wonder if they fixed that because remember, it used to be this part used to be missing all the time. Maybe we just got lucky on this one. I don't know, but they always used to be missing that. Sp yeah, Splinter Cell. I loved all those games, man. All the stealthy games like that, the Splinter Cell and the Hitman and Sniper Ghost Warrior. Love it. Okay, so we've got one more dude to take care of in this building. And that's the guard downstairs who will now be all calm and chilled like a fine wine. Stay there, Commander. This won't take long. Just a quick scan. Scan detected. Ah! Clint Eastwood, baby, quick on the draw. Yeah, I got a 3080 Ti on this one. Uh, it's running, it's running well. Uh, where are we? Yeah, got 60 here. It's capped at 60, so it won't go anymore anyway. All right, my favorite part. Getting high up. Crouching low down and sniping. Bring me your wretched souls. What the hell is everybody? No guards patrolling out here? <laughs> it's just key presses, mate. Key presses. Hey, Goliath, get your sweet ass over here. Anticipating shooting ahead here, unless he's going to stand still. Stop watching me all the time. What's the matter with you? Um, you put me off. Hey. Oh, this freaking thing. I won't shoot you, I promise, because I know if I do, I'm done for. I'm deed. Look at the look at the size of that shadow. It's freaking huge, man. I ain't gonna go anywhere. All right. Is that you. Look at the guns. Oh, I stay away. The hell was that? Sorry, you'll be fine.
No good. That's it. Just ah. So we've done command, we've done storage. Power will come last, we'll go over to the hab. Turn red. Entering pressurized environment. No need to stand so close. Okay. You're pretty, but, you know, gotta be done. It's part of the mission. Can't just be leaving out the pretty, the pretty ones <laughs> and zapping the not so. That would be discrimination. She'll be fine. She's just stunned. Stunned to see me. Yeah, she'll be back. Her name is Mrs. Porn. First name, Reese. Reese Porn. Which is what she will do the next time we jump in this instance. Actually, it doesn't work that way, does it? You don't get the same people's names and stuff like that. Suit recharging. Suit fully charged. Just looking for any data ports. I don't think... Oh, yeah, we got one. Uh, useless, 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 useless. Yep. Useless, useless. Good. It's stalking me, man. There's not 17 people here. We're going to have to go somewhere else. So much for it being a military site as well. I mean, obviously, we can respawn back in here, but uh, I think not. I think I prefer to go somewhere else. Is that just an echo? Ah! Ah, that's normally the good one, it's already open. Right, I could shut the power down, but... I don't want the regulator. So, how many do we have? Oh, 14? It didn't seem like 14. How do you get out of here? Escape. Yeah, it didn't seem like 14. It felt like there was less. Ooh, 
Look at the paintwork on this. Where, where have you been? Oh, Hutton. Did, is this all super cruise travel that takes the paint off? Guys, is that what it is? So when you're out exploring, it's not the hyper jumps, it's all the super cruise travel. This is just one and a half solid hours. There's no paint on the front there at all. It's all streaked off down here. Wow, we got a lot of paint loss just to go to Hutton. Look at this. So if you want a quick, a quick uh, paint job with, you know, paint missing, just go to Hutton. Look at all the burn marks here. Wow. But I guess through normal exploration, right? How far, how many times planets do you have to visit? How many systems do you have to visit before you've done one and a half hours worth of super cruising? It's a lot, isn't it? But that's a lot of freaking paint. Hey, Mr. Buds. Oh, seven. Chest is feeling okay at the moment. Ish. Just see how I how I uh, position myself. Is there any more druggy people here? Oh come on, it can't be just the one place. Is this the only... Oh, well, there's a lot of settlements here. There's a lot. But so far, I've only seen... The, uh, here we go. That's another military one. Another military one. Do they not do any other type other than military? Mining. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> All that way down on the list, and it's just 1.7 megameters away. Oh, that's a thought blog to what? Yeah, does the high speed super cruise rip more of your paint off because you're going faster? See, we, we have to discuss these things, <laughs> these little things. Yeah, good point. What if we what if we traveled halfway to In fact, what if you traveled to I was going to say if you travel halfway and you've got the same paint loss or something. But what if you traveled to Hutton Orbital but throughout the entire journey you positioned the camera here. Would you gradually just see your paint coming off would, would you be able to monitor that and just see oh, oh there's another chunk gone there's another bit missing oh well that's not what I intended commander Herbert Hayes hello commander Herbert Hayes good greetings and welcome to the stream Right, so we just have to go around here. Borzio Mining Exploration. Excuse me? What the hell are you talking about? Dropping too close. Uh, 
I don't know what you're meaning. What the hell was all that? And now you're gonna go too quickly? No, no, we're fine. Looks black and white, doesn't it? Also available in colour. Oh, they've got themselves deep down in here. In the shadows. Do we have any notoriety? No, good. Should, nor should we. Goliath? Surely if there was a Goliath we would see it from here. They're big buggers. It doesn't look like they have one. It's not a military place, so it probably doesn't. And as such, we can get a little bit closer. Awesomeness. We're going to need five people, but we'll probably do everybody. Or, what if we're able to take out five people on the outside without disabling alarms? Could we, could we take out five people covertly? I don't know. Probably wouldn't chance it, to be honest. All right, so this is an extraction building. I don't know if there's gonna be anybody in here who is. A decent level. Actually, you do get people walking up to these terminals. Just waiting to see where they are. That's weird. There's normally somebody going backwards and forwards here. And then that door will open. That's very weird. Is there anybody here at, in the place at all? Any little life forms? We've got a s skimmer. Okay, we got a guy there. All right, so there are signs of life. Good to know. Means that it's not bugged. So in this building, there has to be somebody who would come to this terminal all the time. That's normally the AI walkways, unless they've changed. They can hang around up behind here. Okay, that's strange, but whatever. It is what it is, I guess. Let's see if we've got any other point of entry. scanned. It's Crystal Blake, for heaven's sake. Hold on, Commander. None of your warrants involve us. All right, we're good. See you, Wally. Yep, 
You, you're the one I want. Right, Desmond, do we have a side window? Because if we do, you're mine, baby. How you doing, Des? See you on the back side, flip side, whatever. No, can't kill him yet. We need to take the alarms down. And that means scanning that dude that just walked away from us. Oh, he's not properly looking away yet. There we go. Oh, the timing on that. Holy crap. Okay, I'm going to say that the alarm console is in here, but... Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to say it, but at some point I will. Now, the alarm console is in here. Okay. Good, there's no need to stand so close. Don't stand so close to me. There's somebody in here? Sorry. Priority was definitely to get the alarms off. Criminal faction, eh? No bounty detected. No. No, oh, she was innocent. No bounty. Make sure that's 15, it is. I mean, I don't, I only need to kill four more people. I don't need to do the entire base, but I'm guessing that it's gonna be uh, more popular if I do the entire base, right? And then, there were three. Hey, Desmond. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the thing. You know that thing you did, that clone thing. Thanks. And now I've just killed you. Attack of the clones, baby. And now, two remaining. One of which will be in here. No, just Desmond? Okay. Just Desmond. Point defense down, anti ship turrets down. There used to be another one here. They've been, Frontier been moving the furniture. Or have they? Maybe it's my memory that's gone faulty. I don't think so. I'm going to skip the other locker. Environment. 
Let's get down and dirty, baby. Right, with this archway here, let me just t turn around and see what we have. Yes, it is. It's the exact same layout as our eyes minds. Interesting. So the, normally then there's a guard sweeping from the back here all the way around and he'll go over here and then he'll come back again. Got your attention, didn't I? Entering pressurized environment. Propaganda no good to anybody. Not even in Elite Dangerous. Health kits here, you've got your power up if you need it. Sometimes things on there. Energy cells if you need. Ammo if you need. Which we could. Don't need it, but we could. Jesus. Done. But we shall proceed. We can pick up some weapon, uh, whatever they're called. <laughs> Schematics. What the hell happened to the first one? Jesus. Talk about a jump scare. Frickin' hell. <laughs> okay, well, I think I'll just stick with the... Uh thing here. Oh, manufacturing instructions, baby. I think, I don't even know how many of these things I've got, probably quite a bit. Also from Terminator 2. Guns and Roses, I believe. Hey, Mr. Goatman. How are you, sir? All good, I uh, trust. Look in the bin, look in the bin. Oh, there's nothing in the bin. 
look on the shelf. Titanium plating, gotta have that. Gotta have this as well. Gabron fiber. And some energy cells in case we run out of energy. So this is where we were stood outside of and I said somebody has to walk through this corridor. And where are they? You're going downstairs again. Where did that... He must be on the other side. Okay, I'll just raid this. I think this is fossils in that one, so we'll check the shelf here. Nah, nothing on there I want. Can't remember what's in this one. Fossilies. Maybe I should let him finish that sentence. Okay, shields up. Lower the gun. Weapon fire will not be tolerated. You're gonna die. Out of here. Oh, we're on a mining rig, aren't we? It's shaking. Okay, let's get off. We're st you're still on the frickin' thing. Oh, we don't have the power. <laughs> Battle zone. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, back in the day, matey. Woo! Old arcade games. There's normally an employee around here, but... Okay. Sometimes a mission giver stands on this bridge. Yeah, I do like this layout. It is one of my faves. God, is it? You don't want to come in. But he's blocking the exit. Not a problem. I don't think it's a guard, so he's gonna not gonna have any shields or anything. So it's gonna be not too difficult to, to deal with it. But if he's just gonna hang around out there, I reckon he's going to lose interest. Assume 
Almost matey. <laughs> uh, right, we need some health, a little. I didn't think he'd get off that many shots, but it doesn't matter, we'll be fine. Well, yeah, what I mean is, though, that they, they relax after a while, don't they? And they just go about their business again. This, what's changed, guys? There is, wasn't there a data port here? And then while it was working away, you would come here and... I wonder if they've made some subtle changes. Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay, it's not the right type of stuff. Nearest mining rig, there it is. Don't go into the beam, that's not healthy. Well, there's no place here. Yeah. Can we get through the window? There's your answer. Oh. No. Normally these mining rigs have got uh, health power-up things. Yeah. I think this one. But I can't be sure. Because Frontier have moved the furniture. They've done a bit of Hong Kong fooey. Feng, feng Shui, whatever. How you doing? I uh, will get away. Just did. Mayhem. Come 
on, get inside. Ooh, bugger. I remember once getting a guy walking down here and I and I blew I blew that up. Oh man, he shot into this corner. He was all crumpled up in this corner. Still had all his limbs. Right, before we get in there, there is these uh, fossils in that one, I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna bother with it. Combat is good. Oh, it's not what okay. So we should be able to get some schematics in the Power building, for sure. And I think that's the only building left now. the guard round here. Don't see him, but he could be around the corner. Was there not a box here? Frontier have been moving things around, guys. Unless, of course, the buildings are the same, but the positions of some of the items are different. But normally there was a box there. I must be dreaming. And normally there's somebody up there. Do I have your attention? Hmm. Okay. Normally a guard prowling around here, but I don't see him. Yeah, I think things have been moving around. Don't think it's my memory. Not this time. Right, if you're gonna have the gun out, don't get seen. Or at least shoot first.
Yeah. The AI are on set paths, and it would be nice if it was a bit more random, so it wasn't, you know, so predictable, for sure, 100%. I am very sorry for your loss. Somebody in here? Rusty the door breaker. Is the Wi Fi gonna stretch? Is it? We'll lose it. Oh, it doesn't matter now. Jesus frick. Two building schematics which have no actual use in the game so far. At all. Yeah, you got a power cartridge here, right? Suit fully charged. Right, I believe that's everybody, but if it isn't, what we can do is burn the doors open, and then when the power goes off. When the power goes off, if there's anybody left, they should come rushing over here. The other way to find out, of course. Security is... 66 meters that way. Okay, and other personage? Shut down, T minus 60 seconds. Is 126 meters that way. So that, that security guard should come running in when the power shuts down. And then we'll zap him. Don't know if he's going to come in with shields up or what. But on the assumption he is going to come over, we'll get a vantage point from this side. There you go. Power is gone. Is that, is that explosive? Oh, I'd really love it if they just came running around and then we zapped them on the way in. That'd be just awesome. Unless he's thinking, this is a good time for a sleep. Or is he stuck somewhere? Okay, let's go investigate. We know... There, there were about 66 meters over this way, right?
All right, let's see if we can pinpoint them then, because I don't know where the hell he is. Oh, but there's a side entrance. Oh, maybe he's in here. Well, he's not getting in there, but he can get in the other side. I left the door open on the other side. Is he upstairs? How freaking bizarre. Okay, we'll we'll pinpoint the guy and we'll we'll get him. Screen on. I have seen uh, in the past. I have seen the people trapped in walls shooting at you through walls, but you can't shoot back at them. It's annoying. His shields are up anyway. That's because the power's out. I think he's probably constantly cautious. I think I heard something. Investigating. She. Just goes for miles. Hostile in the area. How on earth did you spot me? I should go back and pick up a freaking grenade now. Right, uh, where's my ship? We killed we killed more than nineteen, but hey. We don't get anything for this mission either, really. Just peanuts in pay and there's no materials. I just wanted to, uh, no pun intended, shake off the rust. Uh, how far was I into the stream starting it up when I said it wasn't going to be another seven hours? It's, it's not. It can't be. What is it now? Four hours fifteen. We probably better kill this. I don't mind streaming something else. Ideas? I'd love to do sim racing, but I think that might be a bit uh, risking it too much. X4. <laughs> no, because X4 it's a whole thing, man. I've got to, I've got to, you know, get into it again and remember it all again. GTA 5. Oh, we can do that. It'll be very random, though. GTA 5. You know, there's no set goals. But I usually play that with a trainer on. I've got a trainer which does all sorts of freaking things, like. Tons of things. If you guys don't mind me playing with trainer on, so I've got like infinite ammo and stuff like that, and I can jump higher and I, I don't die, there's some good fun to be had. A new beta for new ships. Oh, we did, I haven't got it installed yet, but we did get the Talos Principle 2 yesterday. We bought that. I know we've got Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. I wouldn't mind either doing that or another mission in Sniper Contracts. 
What about sniper contracts, guys? Fancy one of those? Not the Ghost Warrior 3, but the contracts one. Many icons. Jeez. If anything, I haven't played No Man's Sky for ages, and that's had some big, major, multiple major updates since I last played it, or since I last had a good, last had a good proper play. And there's another one, No Man's Sky, Schedule, 2.1 gig, Automobilista 2 has been updated. Oh, stop it. I could probably do sim racing, I don't know. I'll find out on Friday if they allow me. Don't take that away from me. I would probably have to stay away from Nodge Life, but that might be a bit too, <laughs> a bit too much. Although, God, I want to get my hands on that thing again I no a few other games now I got um ah uh, did I get yeah sniper ghost warrior 3 I got with CD keys I was talking about a good few games on CD keys but I only bought the one I think And then we got Talos Principle 2 yesterday off Steam. But that is a 72 gigabyte install. I suppose that could install in the background while we're playing Sniper or something. Oops. Didn't have my mouse on the correct screen. So we're looping a little. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Some in-depth discussion and questions about the Super Cruise Overcharge. And who knows, when we get it tomorrow, the whole discussion might not have been worth it. It might just be something so innocuous. Either way, even if it turns out to be a bit of a flop thing, which I don't think so, it sounds like it's going to be good. But at least we, you know, had a good talk about it. Or well, I did anyway, and you guys were texting, texting me. <laughs> it, hey, it would have been nice, wouldn't it, if we'd had a few of you guys on voice. That would have been good, a multiple voice, like a podcasty thing. We should do that sometimes, guys. <laughs> Just get maybe three, four of us uh, just chatting about different stuff of Elite Dangerous. The Elite Dangerous podcast with Rusty Dog and guests. That'd be awesome. 72 gig, yeah, I need a new hard drive, mate. I need at least a, whatever, oof. I need a couple of eight terabytes, I think, because my, my mirrored four terabytes, oh, they're running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> All the partitions are running away from me. I'm having to literally delete things to make space now. Yeah. Permission authorized. Please head directly from bay one two. And the thing is that the mirrored drives we got, remember the mirrored hard drives I replaced when I had a failure? They're four terabytes and they're mirrored, so we're only using four terabytes in total, not eight. And they're getting full now. Um, but if I replaced those two fours with two... Hold on. Yeah, no, I'm right. If I replace those two fours with two eights, then I could take the fours out and use those as my new external drive, which would give me four gigs of space, four terabytes of space on that one, keep saying gigs, and then four terabytes of space on a, on a spare one. 
that would be awesome. Space worries over. But these days, really, we need to be in the SSD territory. Because a lot of the games now, they if you don't have them on SSD, they just take forever to load up. You know. Um, and the problem is I've got uh, Microsoft Flight Sim taking up two SSDs, which is crazy. <laughs> but if I got if I got one one two terabyte SSD, I could put the contents of both of those onto one, and have the other two spare. But then I'd also need the two eights to replace the two fours, because they're going to have to be hard drives because eight terabyte SSDs. Yeah, how much do those freaking things go for? Can you get them? Can you get eight terabyte SSDs? You can, right? No, not M.2s, dot twos, just the the credit card shaped ones. I suppose my ideal scenario now would be to. What would be what it would be if I got an M.2 drive, two terabyte to replace my current boot drive, then that one terabyte drive could replace one of my Microsoft Flight Sim drives, which is only 750. That'd be replaced by a terabyte, so that would alleviate that one. But they'd still leave issues on the other one where that's running out of space too. And then I've still got my my mirrored hard drives so the ideal scenario this is where it gets freaking pricey though is uh, an m.2 2 terabyte ssd um, I'm trying to think about this now right an M.2, oh, I don't know. Right, let me have a look at my PC thing. I had it all worked out once, but that was a while ago. Let's have a look. My PC, where are you? There. Right, so local drive. Can I show this? I think so. Yeah, right. I'm going to show you guys my situation, my my space situation. It doesn't look too bad. I used to have more, you know when you when your drive gets to a certain point and it gets full and you have it turns the the it turns red instead of blue. Well, I had I had a lot of reds. Uh and now not so much. So, yeah, let's see where we are. Mm. Don't even know how to do this. Yay, I did it. Don't need it full screen though. Right, does it say anything on here that I'm not comfortable with? I don't think so. Nope, I'm good with it. Right. <clears throat> so, what we have is this. I know I've got a lot of partitions. I know. So this is a one terabyte SSD standard credit card thing. That's my boot drive. If that became a two terabyte M.2, I nearly said M2 there, Mission Impossible. Uh, yeah, if, if that became an M.2, two terabyte, it would not only give me space, as you can see, I'm running out. It would not only give me the space, but it would give me the speed as well. Two birds of one stone, done. And then the one terabyte drive that's here would come, would be then be replaced by this one, or from this one. This one would replace it. So instead of this being, this is a 750 drive, which is Microsoft Flight Sim 2, 
right? Because I've got two of them. Two drives taking up flight sim. Look, a, a, a terabyte and 750 gig. And look how much space I've got on both of them, guys. 10 gig and 12 gig. They're, they're full. They're freaking full. So the one terabyte would come off here, go to here. That would give me around, what, 200 to 300, maybe close, maybe 250 gigs free. That would see me good for a, a good while. That hasn't helped this one, though. <laughs> so I'm stuck on that one. So that would have to be a two terabyte SSD. And then you've got all of these partitions here. So you've got D, not E, you've got D, F, G, not I, that's a, that's a pen drive. So D, F, G, J, K, N, Y, and Z are all the partitions that are on my mirrored four terabyte drives. Okay, now I've, you can see I've got space on all of these, but it's kind of relative. The only space I can put Talos Principle 2 in is this one. I've got space there, but then I wouldn't have much left. I've got 40 on there, which is fine, but not enough to... One game is 72 gig. It doesn't fit on there. I can't put it on here because that's a different kind of drive. I can't put that on there. Well, the... Yeah, this is my... Oh, wait a minute. I could. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, that's an SSD. Oh, yeah, no, it's an old SSD, guys. 250 gig. It's an old one. I wouldn't trust it. It would fit, but it's, it is this plugged in via USB, so it's going to be fairly slow. Uh, but, yeah, 40 gig on that, 68 gig on that, 17, 11. This is not big enough anymore to install games on. So if this was replaced with two 8 gigs then I could repartition all of these and they'd have each partition would have a ton more space on there. This is my NAS drive, these two. This is for the for Mandy to grab the XFM episodes off me. And this one is my NAS drive here. Nine terabytes. But you can't play games off the NAS drive. Doesn't work. So Yeah. You can make a poll. Uh, I could, but I think, aren't we settled on, what do you, apart from X2 Zonta, what would you choose otherwise? But I don't know which games to include in the poll and which ones to exclude. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I don't know what to include and exclude, so I don't know. I need to do something that's not going to stress me out, though. Okay. Because there are some games I'm not really wanting to play right now. So, so far I've given you what? Oh, it, it won't let me do more than those choices. I don't know how many choices there are now. When it lets me do four. <coughs> So yeah, it's those. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> Actually, smash the likes. I don't know what we are on the likes. I haven't updated my bruiser. Oh no, we're good on the likes, so forget that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll keep this ship here. Like, ooh, I want to check out the integrity on this. I'm going to keep this ship here. 
because we're going to need it for tomorrow. I'll get a little bite to it. I need to hand in my mission, guys, don't I? Yeah, you do. You need to hand it in. <laughs> okay, rep would be good here, I guess. So we'll do that. We gave ourselves a little reputation. Don't get Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 mixed up with Contracts. Contracts is the... The one. Hello, Seeker. Where Ghost Warrior 3 is the, the one with the... A little buggy going around. Personal preference, contracts for me. It's I like it's better laid out. It's newer, better graphics, all that stuff. Right, where's our ah? Nice and allied here. So we're going here. I want to see what the paint looks like. Ship integrity thirty one. Does the paint? And the integrity always match the same. I'm going to keep the paintwork at 31. Guys, this... Actually, I was going to say this was all fixed before we left Alpha Centauri, but I don't think it was. Yeah. If we're going to do the same trip to Alpha Centauri tomorrow, I want the paintwork fixed. I want to see how much paintwork it takes off during the uh, Hutton Orbital trip tomorrow with the new drive on. No, no, the, the, it's on now. The, the, the pole is there, so get voting or you will not be included. Wow, it's it's a dead heat between Sniper and Starfield. <laughs> flight Sim. Oh, poor Flight Sim. <laughs> 34 people watching. Only 11 have voted. Even if you're not going to watch it, guys, stick a vote in. Stick a vote. What time is it? Because I want to... Oh, it's 20.44, guys. I do want to eat something as well before I play it. So I'll probably get a quick snacky. Actually, I've got nothing to snacky on. <laughs> it's 33%. 33%, 17 and 17. Oh, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Someone's going to get disappointed because we've got, we've got them on. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> toss a coin okay I don't have any coins I'll have to toss something else oh maybe in my wallet here I haven't carried money for years guys oh there is a coin it's a tiny little one it's a penny yeah it's a penny one one p that's that's my that's my net worth guys oh no hold on there's some more in here 32 pence, guys. That's what I'm worth. All right. What the hell is on the front of that? Oh, that's a 10 pence. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. That's what I said. 10. 32p. Yeah. Right, I've got 10p here, guys. Here we go, then. Use a random number generator. Heads. Oh, you want me to do it online? But it can only, it has to be a toss of a coin. Alright, we'll do it online, right? But, 
the first entry that has 33% is Sniper, the next one is Starfield. So we normally do heads and tails, right? We don't go tails and heads. So Sniper will be heads, Starfield will be tails. Agreed? Sniper head, sni that's, that's easy because we do headshots in Sniper and Sniper's just taken over. What it's only took one vote to swing it, guys. It keeps <laughs> it swinging backwards and forwards, you guys. Oh my! Stop it! You're voting and unvoting, you buggers. Okay, let's do it. Sniper head, Starfield tails. That's going to be fair because. It's just total mix up on here. Right, hold on. Oh, don't you hate websites where you can't do anything on them unless you sign up or log in? All right, so I haven't pressed anything yet. All right, hold on. This is Elite Company Limited. If you want to know what we do, log in or sign up. Uh, right, hold on. Right, so this is the page we landed on. It's not heads, I haven't flipped it yet. Squidgy, what the fuck? Are you playing solo? I fucking do, man. I fucking do. And besides, when I played in open play with my other account, it was boring. There was nobody around. And when there was, nobody did anything. Max, so it's, it's basically the same experience. But yeah, solo, man. I know, meh. I know. Some people have real trouble dealing with those things. And I tend to find that those people kind of have life priorities in the wrong order, you know. So let's do this and flip it. Heads, Sniper, Tails, Starfield. Starfield. Which I'll also be playing in solo. <laughs> Starfield, guys. Best of three? No, no, we're not going to get into that because then it's just best of five. How can there be more people in solo? What do you mean? How do you mean? No, no, I mean when I went into open play because on my other account um, I started off on open play for quite a bit and recently I've been back in solo on that one but I, I did... I did start off in open and I was just doing my normal Elite Dangerous thing stuff and uh, it was, you know, boring. There was a, like, there was nobody, there was, I came across a couple of players maybe and maybe everybody was out doing the uh, goidy stuff and they were all in small ships, nobody bothered me. I mean, do you want me to be an open play on a live stream so I can get targeted by people so they can have a little bit of fame by stream sniping me? Because that's why I don't do it. You know, I, I play to my own timetable. I don't. I'm not somebody else's game content on a stream. You know what I mean? So I can play open play offline unless I specifically choose to go into open for a reason. But in general, I stay in either a private group or in solo because I don't choose to be somebody else's content while I'm playing on a live stream. If, if I say, right, guys, we're going to go and do this, we're going to engineer this, I want to be able to focus on it rather than have other people jumping in and killing me. It adds to the game, but it also takes away from what I'm trying to do as well, so... Yeah, but like I say, yeah, I, I, you've reminded me uh, also, when I get back to my other account, 
to to keep back into open play because I did start that way and then I I forgot I got back into the habit of clicking on solo. Uh, but yeah, normally normally I'm in I'm in open on my other account, which has got doesn't have as good good a ships as me. Um, but yeah. And I've been stream sniped before, you know. So I'm not into that. So sniper's got the thing. I'll tell you what, if we do sniper because it's got 40%, we'll have to line up Starfield. It can't be tomorrow because of Elite. So we'll have to line it up for another day this week. If I, if, <laughs> it keeps moving around. See, it's gone back to normal again. <laughs> this is the trouble with polls, right? Hey, Astro, I, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, 38, 38. It's crazy. 35, 35. Flight Sim, I think, is getting up there. Let's just do neither of them and do Flight Sim instead. <laughs> oh, guys. I guess I have to pick one, don't I, for me? Which one do I, which one do I prefer to play right now? If I had to pick Starfield or Sniper... I did play Starfield recently, but I can't remember if I streamed it. Let me have a look at my channel. I want to see which, which of those two games was most recently streamed. Starfield was done seven days ago, and so was Sniper Ghost Warrior. Oh, for God's sake. I can't win, guys. <laughs> leave the leave the poll for three days now on a different post. <laughs> we could, uh, yeah. No, we've got to count this, haven't we? Time for a new game, though. I don't know. It depends. I mean, we've got people here. I mean, it's only eighteen votes, to be fair. But mm, let's take a look. I don't know what else we can we can look at really. What if I bring up a game that I haven't mentioned yet? Like SnowRunner or Expeditions, whatever it was. Yeah, that one. And the only time I could strap a wheel to my desk is if I do Euro Truck or American Truck. Because that's nowhere near the intensity of sim racing. Not even close. Oh, I'll tell you what I did buy and install, guys, which I haven't played yet. But you guys may not be into it. Car Detailing Simulator. I got that. I think I got that on CD keys for a couple of quid. It's all, you know, dirty cars and cleaning them all up and... Polishing and waxing and machine polishing. That would be cool, wouldn't it? We haven't played that one yet. I did play the prologue, but this is the actual game game. Should we try that as a new one? And then table Sniper and Starfield for later on? In the week? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oregon Trail, I've not heard of that one. Okay, so Starfield and Sniper, I'm going to close that poll. They did come in level, and also Starfield did win the coin toss. Uh, hold on. It's not letting me make another poll yet. How do, what, why not? Oh, do I only get to make one? Start a Q&A. 
Answer viewer questions live. Never done that before. Starfield won the battle, but not the war. Oh, okay, the poll's gone now. It's not letting me start a new one, though. Right, so... It's fine, it's fine if you don't want it, guys. That's, I'm cool with it. Uh, there you go. Card detailing sim. Brand new for me. Just if you want to see it, put yes or no in the chat. I do this as a hobby. In fact, it's probably what did my frickin' heart in exerting myself, but at least I can't do it this way. But this is the this is the full game, and there's DLC as well, by the looks of it. I'm sure I got that with it. Yeah. If you've ever heard of Ammo NYC, he does deep car detailing. It's all based from him. No flamethrower, that would be good. <laughs> Andy would know. See now, it's gonna make me feel bad if I do it now. All right. What did you vote for, Andy? I should really take in, to be fair, I, or is it fair though? No, I'm kind of discriminating if I do that, aren't I? I was going to say I, I should let my, my members and my channel members have more of a say. Is that discrimination or not? Should I be giving them perks? Yes. Is it discriminating against others? Yes. What do you do? This is the dilemma I have. It, 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 uh, it aggravates me, man. Because I, I do believe channel members and patrons should get those kind of perks and have more say in what gets put on the channel because they they support it so yes they should is it is it a fair system on everybody no it's not but yeah ghost warrior okay i'll tell you what we're gonna do sniper ghost warrior 3 why because i've played that only once on this channel Starfield's had a few streams dedicated to it and we've only done one Sniper Ghost Warrior so that's what we're doing guys executive decision plus the poll Sniper Ghost Warrior it'll only be the second time we've streamed it that's what we're doing I will be back I'm just going to grab a quick bite to eat and a cup of tea and I'll be straight back in okay freaky and it's coming up to 9pm as well and I've got to be at a meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, which I don't really want to go to. So, yeah, sooner I'm gone, sooner I'm back, and I'll sooner we can get out of here. See you later, guys. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for the discussion. Catch you next time.